The implication is if she did wouldn't vote for her. <laughs> Good morning and welcome right. to our regular meeting of January 28th, 2020. We're going to start with an invocation by Karen Shrimpton of the Baha'i Faith of Manatee County, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Please come forward. Create in me a pure heart, O oh my God, and renew a tranquil conscience within me, O oh my hope. Through the spirit of power, confirm thou me in my cause, O oh my best beloved, and by the light of thy glory, reveal unto me thy path, O oh thou the goal of my desire. Through the power of thy transcendent might, lift me up into the heaven of thy holiness, O source of my being, and by the breezes of thine eternity gladden me, O thou who art my God. Let thine everlasting melodies breathe tranquility on me, O my companion, and let the riches of thine ancient countenance deliver me from all except thee, O my master, and let the tidings of the revelation of thine incorruptible essence bring me joy. O thou who art the most manifest of the manifest and the most hidden of the hidden, Baha'u'llah. Amen. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, today, we only have one item uh, for time certain, and that is 10.30 a.m. We're going to break for a Port Authority meeting. Um, do we have uh, other updates to the agenda? Yes, Madam Chairman, members of the board, we have some updates. We're going to start off with changes to the consent agenda under public works. Item number 35, the adoption of the North County Wastewater Master Plan map update. The master plan map, which is figure 6.19, was updated and replaced to add and correct notes on the map. Okay. Under changes to advisory board, committee, and appointments, under neighborhood services, the no item number 47, the library board of trustees appointments, a letter of recommendation from the town of Longboat Key was added to this agenda item, and the background discussion was updated to reflect the receipt of the letter. Under additions to the regular agenda, under the county administrator, adding item number 51, confirmation of public safety department director. This request is to confirm the appointment of Jacob Sauer as the public safety department director, effective January 28, 2020. Also to the administrator, regular items, item number 52, was added Senate Bill 1698 and House Bill 7, excuse me, 1237 relating to pet store regulations. And the request is to adopt language on the board's 2020 legislative platform in support of legislation that would lead to a safer, cleaner, more humane environment for animals awaiting adoption, but oppose legislation that would preempt local ordinances regarding pet stores. Under the county attorney, regular item added, number 53, this is letter of opposition to Senate Bill 1302, it's local government sovereign immunity. The request is the approval of a letter of opposition for the chair's signature to be dispatched to the county's legislative delegation, the governor, the Senate president, and the House speaker. Those are all the updates. All right, um, any board members have any items they want to be pulled from the consent agenda? Yes. Item number, uh, item number 16, number four and five. And I've already talked to the administrator about it. Item number 16, item number four. And five. And item number the five. The budget amendment. Okay. Um, others? I had a request to pull item number 35 um, regarding one of the notes not possibly being correct. 
I'm a little bit confused because it said the notes were added, but I was told the notes are made, perhaps are not correct. Is that still true and we need to have a discussion on item number 35? Okay. Do we call we? item number 35 then. We do? Okay. Yeah. Anything else? Okay. All right. Then we're going to go ahead and go to our uh, awards, presentations, and proclamations. Our first presentation is Results First Internship Program, uh, Spring 2020. Welcome. Hi. Good morning, Madam Chair, County Commissioners, Madam County Administrator, and Mr. County Attorney. Um, I'm here for the maybe fifth or sixth time doing a wonderful thing, which is introducing you to our new cohort of interns. This is our second spring cohort, so just a little history. We started in 2017 with four interns. Um, the main goal of this program was to attract, train, and retain new talent. Um, we've been very successful in doing that. We've had about 37 projects, and the spring is wonderful because it not only gives us a smaller pool of interns due to, you know, most time the students are free in the summer, but it also lets us tweak the program and improve it and kind of test out what we do. So what we like to do is give them that first foray into public speaking, which is a big part of their internship. And the way we're doing that is just throwing them right in front of you for the first thing to do public speaking. So um, they're, they feel the pressure a little bit, but they're wonderful interns. They come from three different schools, three um, different programs, and they're doing some wonderful projects. I'm not going to steal any of their thunder, but we also have their mentor supervisors come and introduce them. Um, just to give them kind of exposure as well. So without further ado, um, here is our spring cohort. Good morning, everybody. I'm Sean Dwyer from Public Safety. I've got the pleasure of uh, introducing our mentee, uh, Demetrios, um, his supervisor for the EMS uh, Community Paramedic Section. Good morning, I'm Dr. Victoria Reinhartz. I'm a professor at LECOM in the School of Pharmacy, and I serve as the pharmacist for the Community Paramedicine Program, and I am serving as Dimitri Chagoya's mentor for this service. Congratulations, good morning. Good morning, my name is Dimitri Chagoya. I'm a student at uh, LECOM School of Pharmacy. I'm in my third year of their four-year pharmacy doctoral program. I'll be working with the Community Paramedicine Program. Some of the things I'll be doing, first of all, I'll be looking at identifying and utilizing different tools and metrics in order to evaluate the program. I'll also be looking at, excuse me, optimizing the uh, referral process mm -hmm. for our medication-related issues to our volunteer pharmacists. On top of that, I'll be looking at writing and publishing a journal article uh, about the economic advantages of this program. So thank you. Great. Thank, thank you. you. What did I want to see? <laughs> Good morning, my name is Michaela Lindykamp and I am a Neighborhood Services Specialist with the Neighborhood Services Department and I'd like to introduce Ilderina Kekic and she's going to tell you a little bit about a project. <clears throat> Good morning, Commissioners. My name is Ilderina Kekic. I'm in my third year of college pursuing a bachelor's degree in marketing. I will be working with the Neighborhood Services Department to raise awareness for the 2020 Census. I am really looking forward to this campaign and making Manatee count. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Good morning, I'm Lacey Pritchard with Building and Development Services. We are excited to be this first time <coughs> um, participants in the internship program and I'm gonna introduce Cecilia Brown. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Cecilia Brown and I am in my second year, I'm an MBA student in my second year at the Jack Welsh Management Institute with Strayer University. I'm going to be working with my mentor, Lacey Pritchard, um, in the building development team to set a policy um, to, uh, for the conversion um, requirement for documentation uh, to match the ADA compliant regulation. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, the very small group. So thank you guys so much. Once again, we appreciate the support that we get from the board. A lot of programs like this don't aren't as successful or falter because they don't have enough buy-in. But really, I'm proud to say that when I present this to other counties and they see all of the buy-in, they're very surprised. They're very happy about it. it gives them hope. And um, that's why we have Sarasota, who has a very similar program, and Pinellas, who's adopting a very similar program in other counties um, that are really observing and seeing us as trailblazers in the results first internship format. Thank you. Thank Good you. job. Um, we welcome all of you. Um, 
We wish you luck. We have seen some amazing things come out of our interns, so we know that you guys are up to the up to the task. We look forward to hearing from you in the future, and thank you all for being willing to participate in this. I, I hope it's a great experience for you. I know it's been a great experience for the county so far, so thank you for being here. Good luck. All right. Um, next up, we have a couple of proclamations. Can I have a motion for approval? So move. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Chair votes aye. Motion passes. First up, Earned Income Tax Credit Awareness Day. We got Steve on that one. Oh, he's, so <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's the money man. Right up his alley. <laughs> I'm going to take the picture. All right. All right. Nothing better than getting tax credits from the federal government. You know, <laughs> hey. we all want more and more of them as often as possible, especially as we go into tax season. Uh, I think starting actually in a couple of days. So this is a proclamation by the Board of County Commissioners, Manatee County. Whereas members of our community who work hard but do not earn enough high incomes may be eligible for the earned <coughs> income tax credit up to a maximum of 6,000 for a family with three children earning less than 54,000 annually. And whereas the IRS estimates that one of the five eligible workers do not claim EITC, which is widely considered the nation's largest and the most effective anti-poverty program, annually lifting 6.6 .6 million people out of <coughs> poverty, half of whom are children. <laughs> and whereas increasing awareness about the EITC can only serve to benefit members of the county's workforce by increasing their disposable income and improving the quality of life for Manatee County residents. And whereas the IRS works with national partners, community-based coalitions, and thousands of local partners and governments that provide free tax help, otherwise known as volunteer income tax assistance and education about the EITC, and whereas Step Up Suncoast and AARP, in conjunction with the Manatee County Library Services, provide free assistance service to help workers determine their eligibility to file their taxes for free and claim their EITC. Now, therefore, be it be claimed by the Board of County Commissioners of Manatee County, Florida, that January 31st, 2020, shall be known, designated, and set aside as Earned Income Tax Credit Awareness Day in Manatee County, Florida, and the board urges all citizens to participate in this day in education and action to help promote EITC awareness for all working families adopted with a quorum present and voting this 28th day of January 2020, signed by our chairman, Betsy Bernack. So, good job. All right, now keep up the good work. Thank you. <laughs> Come to the libraries, and I know the AARP. I happen to be part of AARP, so, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a great service that you all provide for free for those people. Thank you for saying So thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, you all for being here. <laughs> thank you. Did you have anything you wanted to say publicly? Like public comment? I'm just going to I'm just going to add for one it. thing and that okay. is just so you know we've been here several years type thing mm -hmm. we did over a thousand returns last year that's a lot of people we're reaching out and touching so sure thanks for your help well Thank I think you. it's really important that we bring awareness to this and that folks that there is help and that they can come to see you where can they come see you your name too. Um, we're at Stepos on um, Parkland Drive, 6428 Parkland Drive, okay. and, and we're on their website type thing. And we have several sites throughout the county. Okay. And we do it. We started last night. Okay. So we're, we're, we're in business already. All right. Great. Thank, thank you. Right. Thank you. Vicki needs their name. Taxes. Vicki, can we have your name? Um, Pardon me? Your name. We have your name for the record. My name is please. Roger Karen. I thought I was a retired CPA, but I guess I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we all go through those moments. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Good luck. All right. Next up, uh, 31st Annual Gulf G Coast Games for Life Week. Somehow we gave this to our youngest member. We're not sure how that happened. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I apologize, Madam Chair. I thought that um, 
Commissioner Johnson would do a better job with the tax because he's a money guy. That's great. <laughs> I'm a, and I'm an athlete, so I want to be a senior it. athlete one day. So Represent. I apologize, ma'am. Proclamation, Board of County Commissioners, Manatee County, Florida. Whereas Gulf Coast Games for Life serves over 500 senior athletes, providing a vehicle for senior citizens to participate in an Olympic-style sporting competition each year. And whereas the Manatee County Parks and Natural Resources Department, in partnership with the Sarasota County Parks, Recreation and Natural Resources Department, and the City of Northport Parks and Recreation Department, provides an opportunity for seniors to adopt a healthy lifestyle through personal fitness so that they remain active and enjoy their lives to the fullest. And whereas <laughs> the Manatee County Parks and Natural Resources Department, in partnership with Sarasota County Parks, Recreation and Natural Resource Department, and the City of Northport Parks and Recreation Department promotes a celebration of sportsmanship, camaraderie, and competition amongst the communities, senior population of 50 and older. So I'm not there just yet. And whereas the <coughs> Gulf Coast Games for Life is celebrating its 31st anniversary this year in providing fun, fitness, and fellowship for a generation of champions. Now, therefore be it proclaimed by the Board of County Commissioners of Manatee County, Florida, that January 18th and February 1 through 9, 2020, shall be known, designated, and set aside as Gulf Coast Games for Life Week in Manatee County, Florida, to acknowledge and honor the senior population for its achievements and inspiration during the week-long events. Adopted with the quorum present and voting this 28th day of January, 2020. Signed by our chair, Ms. Betsy Panay. Yeah. Yay. Hi there. Thank, Thank you. you. Good morning, Michelle Richardson, Parks and Natural Resources, and Brittany oh. Stokes is here as well. Um, the mic may want to bring down a little. Oh, because I'm short. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> we didn't know we were going to be teaching this today. And okay. Well, we're glad <laughs> you're here. We're looking forward to kick off a great week of competition starting on um, this Sunday. We have over 500 participants registered over the course of the week. Um, so lots of exciting events coming up and we're really looking forward to it. So we appreciate it. So how many people, um, I mean, how old do you have to be to be able to sign up as a senior and what are some of the events that y'all have? You have to be 50 years old by December 31st of this year. So we see Not some 49 year olds in there. Um, <laughs> bowling, golf, pickleball is huge. Of Ball. course, probably the largest event, um, swimming, table tennis, um, Beanbag toss. So Bean bag there's toss. pretty much something for everyone. I was going to say, there's 19 events. Mm -hmm. 19. Yeah. Events. But we're over All right. And then do you give up? Do <laughs> people win ribbons or do they win something if they if win medals, medals? And they have a chance to advance on to the state competition and from there the national competition. All right. Well, so. great. And this is really good for our seniors to stay involved. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, Absolutely. being married to a senior who tries to stay involved as much as he can <laughs> in sports still. So. You're married to a senior? I what about you? <laughs> I don't know. It's going to be one of those days. <laughs> no, she threw that off. I'm married to a senior. Well, thank you for being you here and, and have, have some great games this week. Yeah, Appreciate thank it. Thank you. Have fun. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, we're going to go ahead and go on to uh, citizens' comments on future agenda items. Um, I don't have anyone signed up. Uh, I don't have any cards, right? Nothing so far. So is there anyone in the audience that would like to address the board on a future agenda item, something that's not on today's agenda, something you'd like to see on a future agenda? It's going to be a fast meeting. Okay. We're going to go ahead and close citizen comments on future agenda items. Now we're going to move to the consent agenda. We had two items that were pulled, item number 16. I think, Carol, when you said number four and number five, that's under number 16, yeah. right? Yeah and then item number 35. So is there anyone who'd like to address the board on any of the other consent agenda items? Now would be your opportunity. All right, seeing no one come forward, I'm gonna close citizen comments with the pleasure of the board. Move we accept the consent agenda, mine is 16, part four, five, and 35. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed nay, chair votes aye, motion passes. Okay, we're going to move on to um, our advisory board appointments. We have the Nuisance Abatement Board appointment. Um, There's only one applying. I'll, uh, <coughs> Roden, I'll move to appoint. 
All right, we have a motion uh, to appoint um, the one person that is applied. Uh, Carol, it, I think it's Robin Roden Robin, is the name. Yeah. <laughs> I, did I, I hope I pronounced that right? Yes. You did. Okay. Awesome. Um, <laughs> we, we have a motion and a second to appoint uh, Robin Roden. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay, chair votes aye. Congratulations, Robin, and thank you for your willingness to serve Amen. on the Nuisance Abatement Board. Okay, next up is the library board, I assume. They're moving faster than, oh, no, excuse me, Children's Services Advisory Board. Um, I'll make a motion to approve the only person that's only applied, one. Rita second. Smith. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second to uh, appoint Rita Smith. Um, I... Um, Really happy that Rita applied. I've known Rita for a very long time. Back when she worked at the county, um, I worked with her. So um, she has done a great job um, in the community. So I'm really glad that she's willing to do this. So we have a motion and a second for Rita Smith. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Chair votes aye. Motion passes. Anything else? No, ma'am. We're, okay. we're just grateful she's willing to serve on our children's service. That's board. right. It's, it's, Thank it's you. really a big responsibility. We know how much time those folks put into it, um, overseeing the, the funds that we have and the desperate need for the, to help our kids in our community. So thank you. Thank you. We are in a roll, guys. Um, next up is... Um, Point three. Library. <clears throat> the library board. I'm going to accept the slate. Yep, a second. All right, we have a motion to accept the slate of the Library Board of Trustees appointments. That includes Ms. Patsy Ugardi, Ms. Christine Callahan, and Mr. Marion Duncan. Yes. Um, who made the motion? I can't remember. I did. Chris. Uh, Priscilla and uh, seconded was Commissioner Whitmore. Commissioner Whitmore. Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Chair votes aye. Motion passes. All right. Um, I think we need a break. No, let's let's just <laughs> we'll just keep going on. We're going to have to come back to our port authority meeting at uh, ten thirty. I don't think we quite need a break yet. Um, Twenty three. <laughs> we're going to go to the confirmation of public safety department director. Uh, Madam administrator is here to talk about this. Good morning, Madam Chair, County Commissioners. It's my honor and pleasure to bring forward this morning a confirmation of Jacob Sauer as our new permanent, full-time, forever, <laughs> forever, please, <laughs> public safety director. Um, in your background, there's lots of information about Jacob, but because I want to make sure this is such an important position, uh, as is all of our department directors. I just want to read some things about Jacob for the public. Um, Jacob Sauer stands at the forefront of the rapidly evolving public safety industry. He spent the last three years as Manatee County's Emergency Communications Center Chief, where he championed multiple projects, positioning Manatee County government as a leader in the public safety industry. Through his leadership, Manatee County was one of the first to adopt the text to 911 and pulse point respond applications, as well as establishing negotiations for the next generation call handling solutions. Throughout Jacob's 19 year tenure with Manatee County government, he's built a reputation for innovation and growth. Starting his career as a volunteer emergency medical technician with Manatee County EMS Auxiliary, later getting hired as a paramedic. Jacob has used his industry knowledge to progress through various leadership roles within the Department of Public Safety, serving as a lieutenant in the training section, educating new hires, a district chief of operations, managing daily ambulance responses, and to a deputy chief of EMS where his duties reached outside the EMS division into various public safety functions. Jacob consistently rises to the challenge. In 2016, Jacob was asked to serve as interim chief for the Emergency Communications Center while a national search took place. After an exhaustive search, Jacob was selected to permanently lead the communications division. Now, Jacob's been serving as the acting director of the public safety department since um, March. Jacob leads the five divisions of the public safety, 
911 EMS Animal Services Beach Patrol and Emergency Management, which I think they all showed up behind me, <laughs> which is perfect timing, as well as the department directors. Jacob is a valued speaker and presenter on multiple public safety topics, presenting his ideas regularly at national conferences and other industry events. Jacob maintains his State of Florida paramedic licenses and holds the national designation of registered public safety leader from the Association of Public Safety Communication Officials and has applied to complete his capstone project to obtain his certif certified public safety executive in 2021. He's a second generation resident of Manatee County and a 2017 graduate of Leadership Manatee, which he continues to mentor in those roles. But he's also a Manatee High School graduate, Manatee Technical Institute graduate, has received his paramedic, and the St. Petersburg College business um, applicant as well. So with that, and with all of his team behind him, I'd like to present Mr. Jacob Sauer as hey. a new leader. Good morning, Madam Chairman, uh, members of the board, county attorney. Um, I don't have a speech prepared because I, I don't very much care to talk about myself. Um, I, I just want to say a couple things. Learning Sherry, John and Karen, as well as directors, I stand amongst uh, greats. And I would be remiss if I didn't say that um, our team at Public Safety um, is like family. I've been with them for 19 years or so. Um, they operate consistently at 110% every day. And uh, I tell them I'm, I'm not their boss. I try to be a leader, but I'm there, really there to, to clear the, a pathway for them to do their job. So uh, it's an honor to know all of you and serve Sherry and, and her team. So thank you very much. Yay, Jake. Don't go anywhere yet, Jake. Jake. Hey. Don't go anywhere. Well, he knows. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> just, no, we're going to talk. I, I just wanted to say really quick, what I really liked is when all these people were coming up behind you, you have that instinct, like, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on around me? And you kept looking. At, that's that's good instinct. We know that you're concerned about public safety. Um, <laughs> Commissioner Servia. Yeah, congratulations, Jake. You, um, you are the perfect person for this role, and it's your demeanor that makes everything flow so well. So thank you for your leadership skills, and I wish you lots of luck. Thank you very much. Commissioner Whitmore. I have had the honor and the pleasure of working with you for years, and um, uh, EMS, you've met with me and when we've had issues in the emergency rooms and with EMS and uh, professionalism and uh, always upfront, honest, and <coughs> animal services. You know, that's a tough job so with the support of our staff here, Sarah. You have Sarah's back. You are able to deal with uh, very passionate volunteers and um, give them the facts. And it's just like kind of what Betsy said, it's your presence, I think, for your whole department. Uh, you started from the bottom up. That helps a lot, kind of like Sherry. So you know where your staff is coming from. And um, you're just, I, I'm so happy finally that uh, you're in this job today. You know that. And um, I'm very honored to work with you, and I want to keep working with you for a long time. Thank Congratulations. you very much. Uh, Commissioner Baugh. Yeah, Jake, um, you know, I got to confess, I called Jake last night to congratulate him. So he knows, he knows how I'm very excited about it. And I think he's probably, in, in my seven and a half years on this board, I think he's um, top notch for this position. I think he's going to do a great job. Um, but over and above that, um, the, uh, the president of the fire chiefs in Manatee County was going to be here this morning. I told him I thought it would be about 1030. And of course, it's 930. <laughs> so uh, Lee Whitehurst could not be here. And he's not happy with me, just so you know. Um, but he just wanted you to know um, that you have the full support of the Manatee County fire chiefs. And I'm sure the county commission as well. So congratulations, Thank Jay. you very it's, much. It's well deserved on Thank your you. part. And Commissioner Trace. Congratulations. <clears throat> like working with you before and we'll like working with you now. 
Uh, thank you. All right, and it's great to see the whole team here, especially our dog, and I can't remember his name. This is, um, I don't know if we've actually formally introduced oh. our, our most famous team member. Um, this is Rucker's taking a break. Rucker. <laughs> He's um, a calming dog. That's what yeah, he's supposed he, to do. He, uh, <laughs> he he's done his he's done his national media tour uh, lately, so he's a little wore out. But um, he's he's already helping our first responders um, with PTSD, and he's become our, our most popular team member lately. So. I think we need one. Up here. <laughs> I was going to say you do need to bring him by the ninth <laughs> floor. You know, we, we deal with a little bit do of. That. Um, I was going to make a motion that anytime Jake does a preview, he needs. I was going to make a motion anytime he comes in, he needs to bring the dog with. Him. <laughs> I, I didn't. I didn't want to take anything away from you folks. We know that you are frontline people, but occasionally we get a little bit of that too. So if you could just bring them by to say hi every now and then, <laughs> or, we would or really, get us one really too. like this. <laughs> yes. uh, Commissioner Whitmore. And um, from somebody that's actually worked in the emergency rooms and worked the EMS and what they see out on the fields, our EMS, um, the violence, death, dismemberment, terrible, terrible accidents. I think this is a long time coming. I think it took a while for our community and and um, employers to realize that something like this is needed. And um, under high stressful situations, 911, you know, you could be uh, saving a child or witnessing or hearing a ch when a child when they die. So, uh, you know, what you guys have is a gruesome, sometimes gruesome job and a rewarding job when you can bring them back and get them to the hospital. And uh, I think this little guy mm -hmm. guy is going to help a lot so congratulations does he stay there 24 hours or what how do you he, do he has that? two handlers um uh, james crutchfield the chief of ems uh, is his main handler and then a second handler is up in 901 um, that uh, handles him as well so when when jimmy is on vacation or, or can't attend to him he goes to the second handler um so he, and he works eight to five monday through friday weekends and holidays off he has the life <laughs> off on weekends and holidays <laughs> unless we need them <laughs> well thank you to the whole team for being here we know how important it is for you to support the leadership and we know you will we could tell by uh, your support here today um, we know we have a great team out there and you guys do great work we really appreciate everything all the sacrifices that you do make um, and Jake, we're really glad that you were willing to step up into this position. You've been training for it for a long time, so we know you'll do a great job. So uh, thank you very much, and thank you, Sherry. Okay, thank you, guys. We'll see y'all. No, I don't know. Let's have a motion. No, you need a motion for confirmation. Make a motion to confirm Jake Sauer. I'll make a motion that we confirm. We have a motion by uh, Steve. Steve Johnson for confirmation, seconded by uh, Commissioner Whitmore. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Chair votes aye. Motion passes. Who in their right mind would nay that one? <laughs> oh, good. Good job. Yeah. Well, yeah. great. Moving right along. Item number 52 is uh, Senate, Bell, Senate Bill 1698, House Bill 1237, relating to pet store regulations. Oh, yes, it is. Is Nick in the house? Yes. 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 Nick is in the house. All right, come on down, Nick. He's playing with the dog. <laughs> Hang it around. You can bring the dog if you want. <laughs> oh, Nick, Start bring the dog. We might need him. <laughs> Asking him how he wants us to vote. <laughs> <laughs> True. Good morning, Commissioners. Nick Azera, uh, Information Outreach. And uh, when hmm. last we left this cliffhanger two weeks ago, the board uh, had debated whether to take a position on the proposed legislation before you. And um, I, in, in between then and now, I attempted multiple times to get in touch with the House and the Senate sponsors of the legislation to learn a little bit more get extra context to provide you with, but uh, was unsuccessful in those attempts. So uh, I tried to thread the needle on uh, both supporting the positive elements of this legislation while uh, maintaining the board's uh, consistent position of opposition to preemption of local uh, ordinances. So with that, I served up some language that for you to consider for your legislative platform that would then give you the ability, whenever any of you goes to Tallahassee, to speak on behalf of the po those positive elements of the legislation and uh, against the preemption. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Whitmore. 
Uh, thank you. Uh, this is a, a, a good basis so that we can talk about this. Um, it requires the, uh, the requires the Department of Business and Professional Regulation to adopt procedures for such licensure. And then defined below are the things that uh, the Animal Welfare Group did support, except for the preemption. So I think you did very well on the wordage, and I totally support it. So thank you. Um, I'll just say that I had done a little bit of research in this too, as well, and I know you've all gotten emails. I did talk to Martha briefly about it when I was in Tallahassee, whether or not she had heard about this, and, and basically um, her, her response was, yeah, it's basically another preemption bill mm -hmm. um, with a lot of things added. So I, um, of course, we're not in favor of preemption, but I'm, I'm very concerned about these kind of bills that come forward, and we're really not sure what the effect of them that is. We've been getting emails saying that they're, this is unenforceable, it can't, you can't regulate to this extent, and even some of the regulations I, I, I wouldn't support. I mean, if we're going to be mandating, you know, that a uh, veterinarian visits a pet store, we, I'd rather be mandating that doctors visit with children. I mean, there, we have to have some priorities, and it does always cost money to enforce things. So what does this mean? I'm... I talked with Nick about this language. This language, to me, is basic enough that we're not supporting the bill in any way. Right. But I don't have any problem with the language. But I, I would be very cautious about taking a position on this bill. And I want to make sure that we understand, in, in my opinion, that this language does not necessarily address this bill. That's my take on it. Commissioner Whitmore? Uh, just to clarify, uh, doctors are required to visit patients every day or they get kicked off staff at hospitals um, or they get them discharged because Medicare won't allow it unless the doctor does visit. But I know our retail pet stores now, which are only two, they um, do have vet visits. And because I know Island Beach Vet is their vet and they do are required to go there and make visits. So, but again, we're not getting into the weeds because we're just going overall, Betsy. I, I, can, I respect what you're saying, but it, uh, that is, it probably won't go anywhere, but uh, it's at least we can talk about it. Personally, how we feel, you know, that can go later, but I think, but um, I understand what you're saying, but, uh, just those two incidents that you mentioned, uh, vets do go to the pet stores right now. And, and then when they're adopted, they have to go to the, whatever vet they are, are acquired by that store. They have to make a visit with the <coughs> new owners, too. <coughs> Mr. Ball. Um, well, I was actually, I, I hadn't asked Nick that question, so I was glad that you did. And, and that's what I don't understand you know, why would we support this if it's not having anything to do with the bills that have been filed uh, on the House and the Senate side? Um, I can tell you that, you know, I mean, I, I've had several phone calls on this uh, when people found out this was coming forward today. Personally, it's getting like, you know, it's, it's sad because I feel like we're not getting anywhere as a county, as, as a whole. And, and again, I would feel like two things. Number one, I've said this a bazillion times, yes, this needs to be state or federal, but the problem is the definition of puppy mills. That's what I'm hearing on the state and the federal levels. It is the definition that we need to work on of the two words, puppy mills. Second, I don't think this would stop any of you individually that want to go up to Tallahassee. Uh, you've all... Uh, seen the, the resolution that was done in 09. Uh, any of you are free to go to Tallahassee and speak on any issue that you want, or D.C. Uh, it's not regulated by anything this board does. Um, I know Commissioner Whitmore, I think, said that she even voted on that. So uh, I'm not sure why we would do this at all if it's not really something that does anything. It seems like kind of we're just, we're just trying real hard to do something, uh, you know, having to do with dogs. And, and I just don't think that's the answer. I mean, it's, you know, you get into more and more bureaucracy rather than hitting the problem that, that's there. And, and I'd rather deal with the problem than just, you know, sit back and play a game and, and approve something that doesn't really do anything. Um, I just don't think that's the answer, but at least that's what I'm seeing and, and hearing so far. If, if I am not correct, please correct me, but that seems to be what I'm hearing. Thank you. Commissioner Whitmore. 
We're not getting anywhere because this commission doesn't want to go any further. In fact, the commissioner that just spoke said, let's do it at the state level. So now we got something at the state level to either support or not support. And they say, well, we can go up individually. I don't go up individually unless it's on the platform. And that's why I asked to have it on here. I did sign the resolution because of this reason. We either speak as a body or we don't. And you're not going to get anywhere saying, I'm, I'm coming on my own to speak only on my own, not on behalf of my board. That doesn't get you anywhere. So uh, I'm not going to push this off again. We're going to, I, I, this is, this is very benign, this order, this, um, this, this thing we're going to vote on. I'm not going to push it off. You all wanted it. A certain commissioner wanted it at the state and federal level. I'm working on it. And now it's like, well, do we really need it? I've talked to a few people. This commissioner is going to vote for it. I'll just say, you know, it's, it's an interesting thing where we're at because we don't generally support preemption. However, we're all saying we would love to see this taken care of at the state and federal level, which makes sense. You know, I, when, I, when this issue came forward with the um, different agencies, the Humane Society of the United States, when they came forward and I said, well, you know, this has got to be so frustrating to go city by city, mm -hmm. you know, county by county yeah. to negotiate all of these different ordinances and, and, you know, things are changed in each district. Why don't you work at the state or the federal level to, to get the regulation, to have the USDA enforce the regulation? We know that's been one of the biggest problems that the USDA does not have the money. I think we passed a motion saying to write a letter, <coughs> we did. To write a letter and, and said, you know, year. asking for more funding for the USDA. So it, it, this is kind of an unusual circumstance where we really are supporting not necessarily preemption because we don't want to destroy the right of local governments to, you know, have their own regulations. But if the state or the federal government would, in fact, have regulations that, you know, prohibit puppy mills, however they're defined. That's what I'm hearing right. from Tallahassee and, and D.C. That's, that's why I said that. And that's what we need to move forward. What, what really concerned me when I saw this language, to me, it seemed like it was just another preemption bill. So I, um, I, I, I agree with Commissioner Ball that we're not necessarily making progress, but this language is pretty benign. Um, we're in support of having health, safety, and sanitary conditions in pet stores we're in support of state legislation that we require retail pet stores to be licensed by the Florida Department of Business and Professional Regulation. That, to me, is pretty benign, pretty benign yep. simple. We could move on that, but I agree that it's probably not going to solve the problem, but we are in favor of seeing um, these regulations move forward, not necessarily with the preemption part, but depends on how it reads, actually. So that's how I feel about it. Um, Commissioner Ball. Yeah, and, and you know, if it would make Commissioner <coughs> Whitmore feel better today, I mean, you know, it is pretty benign. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure if she's referring to me in the last meeting or not. I've been pretty consistent on, I'm sorry. <coughs> At all of them, you've, uh, you've said that. So I've been that, pretty yeah. consistent that's because what that's what I've heard from, um, you know, some legislators in, in Tallahassee and, and also on the federal level. I mean, I'm not, I, it you know, um, that's what I'm being told. Um, but yeah, I agree. I mean, this is pretty benign. It doesn't really do much other than tell a pet store they have to be licensed by the Florida Department of Business and Professional Regulation. Uh, and Nick, that being said, maybe you can, you know, tell us a little bit about this department. I'm not familiar with it, so I'm not sure what they do, um, how this might affect our retail store. What do we have, one? That's T2. We have T, it's teachers, nurses, Department of Professional Regulation. Yeah. Um, is it, how, do, how much does it cost? And, and do we know anything about this and what it would entail for any of the businesses here in Manatee County? Nick? This legislation that's yeah. being proposed, yeah. uh, it uh, lays out a host of new requirements for mm -hmm. um, retail pet stores. Uh, to include, uh, as Commissioner Whitmore alluded to, the veterinary inspections, their health. I don't think that was her question, if I could clarify. I thought, I thought your question was, what would it require, what we're proposing, yeah. to, to pet stores to be licensed by the Florida Department of Business and Professional Regulation? Right. That was her Sorry, question. Honey, that was my question, and yes. And if you don't know the answer, are they already required to be licensed? Uh, are Does they? anyone Do know? know? Yeah. Yeah. All businesses. 
I was referring to an element within the legislation that proposes that they be regulated by oh. DBPR. Right. So as to whether they're required to already, I, I'd have to research that, are. Commissioner. All businesses are. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Whitmore. This is very simple for us to do this today. Uh, I'd like to know what legislators in Tallahassee are saying that they don't agree with all of this or what ones in the federal, as Commissioner Boss said, because I'm hearing entirely different and I'm talking probably the ones that she's talking to. So uh, this bill is not what we support. What we still support is home rule. But we want to be able to go up to Tallahassee and say, yes, we support a majority of this bill or the state doing something for animal welfare. We do not want home rule taken away, the preemption. So what we're doing is saying we support um, the part of this legislation. We don't support, support preemption. <coughs> that we've been consistent with for years, and we would never want to. Seventy other counties and cities have gone through this painful process to try to regulate retail ban of pet stores. Um, unfortunately, we're not one of them, but 70 have, and I sure don't want to take their rights away to do it. Again, I'm real strong in home rule as a former mayor, so I get it, probably more than a lot. So, um, But I don't think it's going to be very hard to, I think we should just move forward on this. I respectfully ask you to approve it. Commissioner Trace. I'm not going to support it because to me it makes us wishy-washy. <laughs> um, I think both sides will take that and say Manatee County supports it. And the other side will say, Manatee County opposes it. To me, we haven't made a statement one way or the other. We're just trying to, you know, I'm, I'm all, f I don't want animals abused. I'm all for that. But to me, we're not accomplishing anything by trying to, we're trying to accomplish something, in which case then we should just flat out say what we want to, accomplish. What we want to try to accomplish. Here we're trying to, right. you know. One person at a time, please. So I just, I, I'm not going to support it because to me it doesn't accomplish what we're trying to do. A lot of the regulations they already have to do, and I could just see both sides using it, and, you know, we haven't made a statement one way or the other. But uh, that, that's my opinion. Mr. Johnson. Um, I kind of, you know, agree with what Priscilla is saying. You know, I'm all for home rule, but in, in this instance I think this is a perfect example of we should have exemptions <coughs> at uh, – you know, that the state should be the one who regulates it. It's actually, it should be the federal government, in my opinion. <laughs> it should be, you know, because the state can regulate it, but, you know, most of these puppy mills, from what I understand, are located in Kansas, Iowa, Iowa you Ohio. know, outside even this state. But, you know, I, I just uh, agree that, you know, this doesn't really say anything one way or the other. You know, I, I don't know where the bill is at. You know, I, I might even support the bill. You know, d you know, depending on how it finally gets written and gets voted on, and we don't really know how it's going to look at this point because it's still very early in the game. So I can't see us, you know, like we, like I think Betsy said, you know, it's a it's a very benign letter for sure. So it really doesn't say anything. But it, you know, I I don't want to confuse our legislators with thinking that this board, because of this letter, we we now are in favor of the bill going through because I don't think till we see the bill should we be taking a position on it I guess is my thoughts Commissioner Servia okay so where I stand is I am for safe clean living conditions for animals I am against preemption unless the state and feds get it right mm -hmm. then I'm for it so would it help if we could clarify not only what we support which are the clean, safe living conditions, but what we don't support in the bill. I think if we added that language, our position would be more clear than it is today. Uh, Commissioner Whitmore? Well, that's what I originally had asked, and then I heard that this language came before us, and I thought, okay, so, because I actually have the bills, they're identical, and I said, well, that's one part of the bill that was mentioned, but nothing else was, and, and then I heard that it, it's going to be benign. The bill is already up there. It hasn't been, it hasn't gone anywhere so far. But if it does go somewhere so far, we support a lot of it, like Misty said, but we don't support preemption. That's all this benign letter is saying. And if you guys can't even support that, I, uh, I just can't believe the thousands and thousands of people in this county 
are going to hear you say that because you know how this community feels about it. And I agree with what Mitzi said. Let's look at the bill, which I have in front of me, but it didn't get included in because I, I didn't know if the chairman pulled this up or Nick did the wordage. I didn't see it till it got put out in the agenda. There was only one sentence of the whole bill that was mentioned, except that we don't support preemption, which we don't. I agree with Steve. We don't support that. I don't support anybody in the state telling us you know, what to do to preempt what we're doing. So, um, but you know, the authorizing contracts with the veterinarians to do inspections, they do that at Petland now, guys. Um, but safe, clean, uh, having floors, um, Vern's up in um, D.C. There's a bill now that he's looking at sponsoring where they have to have flooring and not wiring. Everybody keeps pushing this off in the state and the feds, and we can't even get our act together locally here, and I'm just really disappointed. Uh, I don't know why people have an issue with this, and when this is a very, very strong issue in our community, and saying let the state do it, let the feds do it, and then I see that this at the, at the state level, I bring it to you, and you don't want to move it forward. I don't get it. And I agree with what Mitzi said, and I would respectfully ask that if you can't really do anything now, that you at least accept this benign letter so that we can go up. It's probably not even going to go get to any committee meetings. But I, I, in all due respect, I wanted to say that the board has looked at this. We don't support preemption. We support a lot of what's in this bill. Madam Chair, if I might very quickly, Nick, as I read the agenda item, there is no letter that is discussed. This is simply additional language in right. our legislative platform, our platform. Correct? correct? So there is no letter that's being considered unless the board wants to go that direction, but the agenda item is not structured that way. Thank you. Good point. Uh, Commissioner Baugh, um, it, it seems like to me that um, you know, maybe we should look at this from another angle, kind of what Misty said, I, or I'm sorry, Commissioner Servia. Um, you know, if if we could get the state to, I mean, this the two bills that you see pretty much come up every year. I mean, this is not new in, in Tallahassee. Um, you know, we've seen them before. So, you know, maybe we need to... Um, I, I would think we'd probably need to discuss this in a workshop and come up with a plan on what this board could approve or would be in favor of. I agree with Misty. We need to make sure that our um, animals are being um, in a clean environment. I mean, I think that is important, that they're being fed and taken care of properly. I think that's important. Uh, but going back again, um, I think it's very important that if we want to take care of this problem, we can't take care of it. It has to be on the state or federal level. I am aware of the bill that um, Commissioner Whitmore is talking about, that um, Vern Buchanan is looking at. I'm familiar. Um, some other board members might be as well. I don't know. But, uh, you know, the point is I think we're seeing and, and we should be encouraged because I think the state and the feds are definitely looking at wanting to uh, – they realize there's an issue. They want to try and take care of the issue, but I think we need to um, have conversation with some of our legislators federally and, and statewide to make sure that we can come up with something that they will sponsor and take care of and move forward. We can't just sit back and say, well, we're going we're gonna to grab onto this one because this has been filed. Let's make sure that we are on the same page. I, I don't think the majority of us are on the same page. Um, you know, we don't want to hurt any business, but at the same time, we'd like to make sure our animals are, are taken care of properly. I think that's important. It goes both ways. And uh, let's take care of the puppy mills, which is really the biggest issue that I think this board has overall is where the puppies are coming from and, and how what these puppies are being, you know, what they're going through before they even get here. So I, I think to not address that issue... Um, to try and, and come up with, uh, with a solution that Tallahassee and D.C. can both support, we're wasting our time. We're not getting anywhere. Um, so I, I think that Carol would be a great one to um, lobby this issue. Um, and, and once this board has a workshop and we come up with a plan on, on what we're hoping to accomplish, um, you know, but right now, I, I just don't see where we're all there or what we even think or want or need. 
And that's what's disturbing me about the whole thing. Thank you. Madam Chair, Commissioners, just as a reminder, you have workshopped this issue previously. I'm looking at Assistant County Attorney Ann Seven Morris times. twice. Yeah. Yep. Do I see two fingers or three? Yeah. I'm seeing three fingers. Right. On three prior occasions, this board has thoroughly workshopped this subject matter. Well, it obviously <coughs> hasn't been successful yet. Oh. Well, and I'm up next. I mean, the problem that I have with this is, you know, we <coughs> have not received one email from anyone asking us to support this uh -oh. bill. I've received numerous emails from people yes. asking us not to. Right. Specifically, I'm going to read from uh, Jenna Jensen, Humane, oh, Humane Society of the United States. Not only does she say it's another preemption bill, right. but she says she's attached a fact sheet detailing the true nature of these bills, which is not animal welfare. Right. Not only would these bills institute meaningless and unenforceable pet store restrictions, so it's more than the preemption. The bill has problems with more than the preemption. I am, and I said this when this came up the last time, I'm very concerned about saying we support the bill but preemption. I don't support the bill but preemption. I got you. So this language came about. Mm -hmm. I don't think it actually does a whole lot. I agree that we need to not, maybe not um, workshop this. Certainly, any commissioner can do the work they want to do, come up with something, present it to this board to support a position at the state or the federal level. It would take a lot of work to figure out how to do that, but if somebody wanted to do that, this language here, does it grant some authority to some board member to do something? Other than to say that we support uh, to improve the health, safety, and sanitary conditions in pet stores and require them to be regulated, I think that's all it says. That's all it says. So do I think that does a whole lot? No, I really don't. Um, I, honestly, I can't answer the question right now whether or not they're already or licensed by the Florida Department of Business and Professional Regulation. I would guess they are. I would think every business has to be, but I, I don't really know that. So I, I, I don't, the language, the, the discussion up here got a little bit confusing that this really was a support of the bill. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to vote in support of this bill, so I want to clarify that. The um, maybe they're going to answer my question. That'd be great. Hello? Good morning, Commissioner Banak. No, pet stores are not currently licensed by the state. Uh-huh. Okay. Oh, yeah. mm. Which is different than being registered with DBPR. Mm -hmm. So the bill, the legislation that you're debating, would require a new pet store license for retail pet stores. It's like beauty shops. Well, I, I am going to vote against this simply because it's the third time I've heard whether we're talking about the bill. I am not supporting of the bill. I will not vote in support of the bill. And if that's what this is, this language is, and that's what I just heard Nick say, then I am not voting in support of the bill. Um, Commissioner Servia. Yeah, and like I said, I think we're all in favor of great living conditions for our pets, and we see that there is a problem. But I think that we need a stronger response if we're going to respond to the bill. And if we're not going to have a strong response, then I think we shouldn't, you yeah, know? Yeah, I agree. Um, so... I, and I'm not familiar with the bill. I haven't read it. Mm -hmm. I haven't but, but here's what I'll tell you. When the Humane Society, when the United States Humane Society speaks out and gives you their advice, I listen. Mm -hmm. Because to me, they are the authority. Commissioner Bellamy. Yeah, I um, oh. spent a little bit of time with this and actually communicated with some people um, about this. Um, I keep hearing the word benign. And... Um, <laughs> well, it's, it's, right, <laughs> so it's everything. <laughs> so, I mean, I've, I've been here maybe a year and a half, two years now, and, and this has been something that we have been dealt with. I don't think I've been a part of any of the um, workshops to be. We have. Uh, I have one. I don't think I have. I don't think I've been a part of any, any of the workshops. Um, but I'm, I'm sure the intent of the workshop is for us to identify what direction we want to go. And right now, with the, the, the content, it seems like the information that's in front of us, we're not necessarily comfortable with it. 
how do we get where we're trying to go with this so we can make sure that we do make a strong statement and they do understand what our position is? I mean, I don't want to, and this is just me, um, and I'm not as in depth as, as Commissioner Whitmore and probably not as knowledgeable as some of the rest of them, but I don't, I don't want to keep looking for reasons to say no. And, and, that's, and that's, the other side, that's the other side of this because um, what I've learned with me going back and doing a little bit more research, if we continue to um, kick this down the road, I mean, we're still talking about the safety of, of the animals and we're still talking about a lot of the issues that we want addressed. Um, what are the steps that we take in order for us to make sure that we are getting those issues addressed? But right, right now, and this is nothing against anyone, if we don't move or we don't make a statement, are we kicking the can again? Yes. And that's just me. And, and, and I know it's tough because it's benign. And it doesn't identify our, um, our position on this. But I think we have a responsibility to make sure that we identify our position. It's just me. An idea, yeah, that's good. Uh, Commissioner Trace. I'm against this bill. And to me, if I vote for what's the way we have it worded today, so it kind of says I'm wishy-washy on the bill. So I'm against that. But if all we're trying to do is have, a, is have it on our legislative, I have no problem with saying we think that animal places, pet stores, should be professionally licensed, health and welfare, however Nick thinks is a proper way, and have solid bottoms on their, on their, um, on their pens. I think that would be a good support saying that we care about the animals, right. but it's in our legislative platform and we're not supporting this bill. And then when we're up there in Tallahassee, Washington, we can talk about that. And I'm sure Carol has a couple other things, but those were three. Mm -hmm. These are the th three things, especially the solid bottoms is what I hear all the right, time when right. people are saying. <coughs> so I have no problem away from this bill, us just saying what we consider important, which I think is what we're trying to accomplish. So those are three things I have no problem adding to the legislative platform, which is what we're supposed to be doing right now, mm -hmm. saying they need to be professionally licensed. I can't believe you can raise animals and not have someone come in occasionally and look at them. Right. Just saying. All now, right. I think vets have to. Maybe that should, if they don't have to, that should be on there too. They should have a vet visit, whatever's a mm -hmm. reasonable amount of time. You know, like I said, something health and welfare for our pets. Mm -hmm. And a solid bottom on pins. I mean, I'm fine with those or whatever else. And just basically, I'm against this bill. Mr. Whitmore. I get it. Um, somebody came up with this word just to put this on the platform. This is, uh, my whole intent was not to get it going any further with any preemption with governments. But at least something got put on the legislative platform, even though we don't agree with it. So even if we did legis on our legislative platform that we don't support, um, Senate Bill 1698 and House Bill uh, 1237 um, in its current format, and but we do support the humane treatment and care of animals. Or just say we don't support it, at least I can go up and talk about it. Right now I was trying to speak as a voice, and I haven't been able to because I'm not going to go rogue, and I'm not going to go up and talk to our legislators rogue unless <laughs> I can go up and talk to our legislators on behalf of the board. I agree. I don't support this. This is the only thing that's come up at session that we could even put our teeth on to go up and say that. So I'm okay on our legislative platform if we just say we don't support those two bills, and um, we can still talk to our legislators, and maybe we can form up something with them in the future. Our intent, Reggie, so far by this commission is not to do anything and not support the ban of retail sale of puppies and kittens. That has been our intent. We've been through many, retail, uh, many work sessions, hours and hours and hours. Yeah, I know. Um, our animal community is very frustrated and very disappointed in this community. And when I saw this come up, I thought, what if somebody gets this and slides this bill through? And then the 70 communities that went through the hell that we've been trying to go through and haven't gotten anywhere, all of a sudden their bills and their ordinances get thrown out the window. That's what I didn't want to happen. But maybe, um, like Priscilla said, I think we should um, make it more comprehensive, but or maybe not. Just say we don't support the bill, and then let's go up and we can talk to our legislators about it. Please don't support this. Let's work on something next session. That's all I want. So does that sound better? Yeah, and I, I think we're making progress. And um, certainly this commission, <laughs> this community, the businesses in this community have spent hours, days, talking about this issue. 
what it has boiled down to is every single person up here has expressed a desire to improve the conditions to end, quite frankly, end the uh, retail sale of pets, but we haven't been willing, I'm talking from my perspective, have not been willing to adopt an ordinance that would put two, two businesses that right. have not done anything wrong such that they've been put out of business. There's a lot of debate about what they've done wrong, but we've not been, this commissioner has not been willing to put them out of business by adopting a regulation. Right. But that does not mean that every single commissioner up here has not expressed a desire to improve the conditions for animals that are sold in these stores and to improve the regulation. We voted to, uh, to add funding to who does have oversight. We talked to, many of us talked to um, the director at uh, the Department of Agriculture. I talked to her myself, who'd been there for like, what, 29 years or something, and she was retiring. Um, uh, and she expressed her concerns about the lack of funding. So we've had mm -hmm. extensive conversations with the community, with the people that are extremely passionate about this issue. At this point, they're asking us to not support this bill. I have no problem with a motion that says we do not support this bill. I'll make and that leaving motion. it leaving it at that for now. Mm -hmm. And then um, you know, hey, this is gonna I believe the groundswell will move this issue. You know what what do we say that the pet budget in the United States is bigger than many countries or something? Mm -hmm. I mean the passion that people have for their animals is gonna move this issue. You know I'll make a motion we don't support this bill. Uh huh. We have a motion. Is there a second? I'll second that. Okay. We have a motion to um, just change our position to say that um, the board. Well, you can, can you wing this one? Mm -hmm. Maybe the motion should say should say specifically that you oppose okay. these two bills. Yeah. Right. Not two that bills. you don't support, but that you oppose Senate these two and bills. House. Right. All right. So we have a motion to. Um, to change the statement to say that we oppose uh, Senate bill, whatever it is. He's got them. 1698, House Bill 1237 relating to pet store regulations. All right, Commissioner Ball, you're up next. Yeah, I, you know, I think it's probably a good move, the motion. I will support that motion. Um, but, but I'm also a little concerned about you know, Commissioner Whitmore using the word rogue. rogue. Uh, you know, there is... Uh, resolutions out there that I wasn't even on the board and voted for that gives every commissioner up on this board the right to go to Tallahassee or D.C. or anywhere else and speak for themselves. Uh, it is that way in any county in the state of Florida. <clears throat> so, and I think the other thing that should be brought up is that, you know, we're not made to be a team up here. Um, <clears throat> we're not made to, to always agree on an issue. Uh, we are up here because of the people in our districts or at large that vote us to put us up on this board. And so we represent them. And, and so we need to remember we're not a team per se. Uh, we're a team with the people that voted to put us up on this board to represent them. So, um, I, you know, I think it's obvious that we all are concerned in one way or another um, about our, our animals. And, and you know, I, I just don't like to hear, you know, like a couple of last meetings, I, I've heard the word liar. Now I'm hearing rogue. I mean, let's get real up here. We're doing our jobs representing the people that have voted for us to represent them. So um, I think we should be a little bit more... Um, I'm not going to use the word professional. I, I'm going to say that we need to be a little bit more aware that um, what we do up here is for the people that we represent, which are the citizens, not each other. Thank you. Commissioner Bentley. No, I'm biking out of that. I'm good. <laughs> Commissioner Whitmore. Well, I'm not. <laughs> biking out of that. Yeah, I won't. No way, no way. I'm sorry. I have been here a long time. I've gotten a lot done being professional. Uh, with the citizens of Manatee County. I received close to 100,000 votes on the election, last more than any federal or state 
elected official that got elected, and it's because I don't go rogue. I go and I speak on behalf, why do you think we're here today? I could have gone up and done my own little thing. I'm not speaking on behalf of the board. I feel as an elected official, yeah, I, we all have our separate opinion. I, I watch Misty's little things that she does after the meetings, and there's things that she doesn't support, and she smiles and says, I didn't support it, but this is what happened, and this is the majority, so this is what we're doing. And you know, that's how it's supposed to be. Um, in order to get things done, I remember Senator Bennett when we went up there, he goes, it means nothing when one of you go up and, and do stuff. It means a lot more when you go up and you speak as one body. So I can go up and talk individually to people that things are, but when, I be, when I'm here on behalf of the board, I want the board to know what I'm doing. So yeah, I, I, you, can, you all can do whatever you want, but, and I know you do, but this commissioner is gonna try to maintain the integrity of this office. So this seat, and I'm gonna continue doing it, and I've been very successful doing it. So, and I'm not gonna get into the back and forth, but it was brought up, so thanks. Commissioner Johnson. Okay, getting back to the, the, uh, the motion. Um, yeah, please. <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm going to support it. You know, um, but I, I would request that that maybe we could add that we don't support this, these Those two, two bills, bills in their current That's state. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, I'll amend because my motion. maybe they can tweak it and and we'll come back. But if we could maybe amend the motion to say we oppose these bills as currently presented. I'll like amend that. my motion to say that. I don't know who second. I'll amend my second. Okay. Great. I think that's good language. Yeah, um, Commissioner too. Trace. I'd like to speak after the vote, please. Mm. Okay. Uh, we have a motion on the floor. Um, Vicki, you got the motion? Uh, yes, to amend the motion to oppose as currently presented. Okay. And could you read the whole motion just so everybody's clear? Um, yes, to amend... The motion to oppose the two bills. Um, I, I don't have the bill numbers in my minutes yet. Senate Bill 1698 yeah. slash House Bill 1237. Thank you. Again, Senate Bill 1698 slash House Bill 1237. To oppose them as currently presented. Thank you. All right, um, we have a motion on the floor. Is there anyone in the public who'd like to address the board on this motion? Okay, seeing no one come forward, I close public comment. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed nay, chair votes aye, motion passes. Commissioner Trace. Uh, since we're talking about this, would we like to add some things that we would like to, to see on our legislative platform, such as um, vet visits, health and welfare, bottoms to pins. Is that something we want to add? Then we have it, or we're not willing to take that up right now? I'm fine either way. Enough. Uh, Commissioner Bellamy. Right, and, and when I reviewed it, I actually highlighted some of those things. I think we have to be a little bit more specific and detailed uh, within our direction. I mean, one of the statements that is requiring certain documentation mm -hmm. of the sources from which port stores acquire pets for sale, I think when we go there, we need to be specific, or they need to be specific, in order for us to say, okay, this is what we want to support and what we don't want to support. But I'm just knowing we talk about it, and really we've never said exactly what we want them to do. And, I mean, to me, that's where we, you know, we're opposed to this bill, which I think we're all, but, all right, what exactly do we want them to do? All right. Uh, I mean, the one thing I got was people, they want bottoms on their pins. Well, I mean, if that's what the people really seem to want, say I that. would like to have that. I have to say that. Everything will be, yeah. Well, not, I'm not saying it's everything. Exactly. And, I, and I don't think you can list the thousand things that they all want, but three or four things, that was the number one I've always heard, the number one thing I heard from everybody. Do we need to add that, or, or are we just going to have the same conversation again in six weeks? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I mean, I'm ready to list what, what it is we want the, the, let the state and the feds to accomplish so that when we ask, we're like, we already have this. This is what we want. Uh, I don't know if we're willing to state that right now, but I think somewhere along the line we need to say what we want them to do instead of just kind of willy-nilly and around a question. And I know one of the things is they want bottoms on pins. I'm just saying. I don't know if we want to put it on now. If we don't, I'm fine with that too, but we're going to be talking about this again then in six weeks. Commissioner Bellamy. Yeah, I, honestly, um, with me reading everything, I don't have everything compiled in to know how I like Commissioner Whitmore, but I, I think when we start talking about what we want, this is a perfect opportunity to kind of hear from Commissioner Whitmore and kind of wear those things out. And so if we can get on the same page, this is an opportunity for us to talk about it. I, I don't, I've gotten the 
the, I've, I've listened and heard the tone. We don't want another workshop. We don't want to go down there road again. But if we're talking about specific content, this is a time when all of us can talk. Right. There's an opportunity for us to say what we do and we do not want. So now is the time for us to hold that conversation. And I'm just against can kicking right now. I just want to make sure that whatever we can do, let's get it done. May I dialogue, Chair? Yes, ma'am. Um, that's, I'm just saying we talk about this a lot, but we've never ever actually said what we want to accomplish. I agree with Betsy. We did not want to put a business out of business, right. but there's certain things that we could say you need to do, and I think we need to say them. I don't think we need to list everything. I think three, maybe four. If you get more than three or four, then it, it, becomes, too, it becomes too much. And, I, and like I said, we're talking about it now. Maybe that's the time. Or we can do it later. Maybe Carol can have a list of stuff and we can prioritize the list at another time. Whatever y'all want to do. But I'm just tired of <coughs> never really having a, a platform about this. So when people come in, we can say, this is what we also agree with. And be done. Um, you know, we talk about this a lot and we don't accomplish anything. Well, exactly. And the last time it came up, I was... I specifically stated I'm against putting someone out of business because that's how individuals feed their family and they, and they take care of their responsibilities. I'm, I'm against that. The, um, the second thing, as far as the, the three or four, um, when we come up with the content, I mean, I, I think it's important um, for um, Commissioner Whitmore um, to weigh in so we can identify what we want. Um, but if it's not to the forefront and everybody's not able to, to, able to dialogue on it, I think we're, again, not making progress. And that's what we're trying to avoid. Commissioner Whitmore. I got it. Um, the, uh, the big thing with a lot of the um, animal rescue people, or, or the community, majority of our community, they want um, qualified breeders regulating the sale and transfer of household pets. They want cer access to certain documentation of the source from what the pet store is acquired for sale. They're, they're having issues in Tampa right now, and the commission's actually thinking of changing their, their law that they allowed it, and now when the people tried to research it, only twice in two years have they been able to get access to those red. The living conditions, et cetera. But I happen to have the federal act that um, Vern's possibly going to um, um, sponsor, and this is what Priscilla's talking about. It's the Puppy Protection Act, H.R. 2442, and it um, has 40 co-sponsors so far. This bill would increase the standards of care for dog living in breeding facilities covering under the Animal Welfare Act. Some of the improved standards include a prohibition of wiring flooring, larger cage sizes, prohibition of cage stacking, mm -hmm. access to continuous potable water, which believe it or not they don't have, exercise requirements, veterinary care requirements, and more. So what you just said is kind of what the federal one is looking at, too. I'd be, oh, may I? Well, no, um, I'm going to go down the list. Everybody, you guys had plenty of time to talk, so other people get a chance to talk, including me. Um, uh, I, think we're, I think we're talking about good stuff. I think we want to be proactive, but, you know, you've had to sit through these three hearings to hear from the mm -hmm. variety of people that are involved. You know, you've got breeders, and honestly, I don't really understand where they're coming from sometimes, but they object to things, and they are our constituency as well. Right. We cannot do this in a vacuum. I'm, I think it's great to understand what's going on at the federal level. We need to look at that. I, you know, hey, somebody wants to take this on and bring it back, but let's have something proposed. Let's have a discussion about it. Um, I think, uh, Commissioner Whitmore, you've been talking um, with Vern Buchanan. I, his you know, I thought what he did, um, and I have been extremely supportive, as you know, of his animal cruelty mm -hmm. because it made so much sense. And I wish the state would adopt it because it is very clear legislation. Mm -hmm. So let's go this route here. Also, come up with something and bring it back. I have no problem with bringing something back that addresses this. But it's not simple. We can't do it right like that not, and not have the people involved. So that's Just my take on it. Day. Uh, Commissioner Serbia, you're up next. Yeah, you just said exactly what I was going to say. So I hate <coughs> kicking the can down the road, but I also hate putting something together willy-nilly that doesn't get us where we want to be. Right. So, um, and I just want to make one point because I heard Reggie say that he's not in favor of putting businesses out of business. I don't think anyone on this commission is well, in favor state my of doing that. 
I don't. I, I think business. we all are supporters of business, and I think the issue there is whether or not the retail sale of pets Products. would put somebody out of business or not, because there seems to be only one pet store that does that, while the rest just sell supplies. Right. So, thank you. All right, Commissioner Trace. I wouldn't really say we're doing this willy-nilly. I've sat through two workshops, two, maybe three public meetings. Um, so it's not like we haven't had a ton of information. I have no problem coming back, though, because I do believe that we should get it right. I just want us to have something so when people say, we can say, this is what we stand for as a board. And I have no problem. If you want to have it as a public meeting, I'll make the motion that whatever Sherry says is a reasonable time. I have no. I think this, this the federal... Um, um, Puppy Protection Act, right. Even just to say we support the federal. But I just want us somewhere along the line to say what this board thinks about on the animal instead of constantly kicking it down the road because that's all we've really done. That's basically what I said. Why I brought it up. Now, we want to do it later. I don't know the best form to say that. Personally, I could make some things decisions today because I have sat through two workshops, I think three public hearings. So the information has been given to us on multiple occasions, I think the lawyers down there are saying, please, please don't do another one. Mm -hmm. Just your, attor saying. your attorneys have, have consumed hundreds of hours on right. this subject matter. Okay. It has to be legally enforceable. So it has to. to incorporate a lot. So, I, and, and I guess I, I'm just going to say, I, I didn't see turning this over to staff. That's not my position here. I'm trying to turn it over, quite frankly. Commission, Commissioner Whitmore, this is her passion. Bring something to us, Commissioner Whitmore. Then we'll discuss it. Right. Bring something. No problem Pull it that. all together. You know, you are the, you've been the passionate one involved in this. You want to do something. You know, you're working with Vern Buchanan on it. Bring it to us. Let's see something, you know, and then we can discuss it and hopefully come up with a position. I think, you know, I think all of us have been clear that we're willing to support something. Um, and this is, you know, we're not alone in this, guys. We are <laughs> not alone in this. And like you said, What's Hillsboro going through? Even places that have adopted, you know, bands have found out that they have issues. Um, so I, I think you can do that. Now that I threw that challenge at you, Commissioner Whitmore, what do you have to say? <laughs> um, June 18th, because it was my daughter's birthday about two or three years ago, uh, I was bringing this issue up. Maybe what's well, before you guys, so maybe three or four years ago. Um, I brought this up on June 18th under public comment, and we all, it was very painful. <laughs> six hours of public comment before we even started the meeting about this issue. And it was not pretty. It was very, and I didn't get anywhere then either. But um, I, I, I'm gonna, um, yes, I, I'm gonna ask um, Sherry, and I'm gonna ask the board if I can sit down with Nick and probably Ann, if it's all right with um, Mickey, to go, because I, I do need legal stuff, and I want to go through all the statues that are out there, and you keep pushing it on Vern. We've well, got I local, state, and federal. Um, you know, Vern doesn't tell the state what to do, and the state doesn't tell us what to do. So, but we want the state to be able to adopt something that we all can live with, so the county will live with it. Right. I have met one-on-ones with the right-wing animal activists and the other side. <laughs> for lunch um, over the past month or so. And um, so we're, we're trying to figure out a way we all can work together. I'm not just doing this up here, trust me. It's my passion to treat elderly and seniors respectfully and with respect. And it's my saying, the less fortunate and animals too. That's all I care about. I'm in, in the healthcare background. I'm social service. That's all I care about. And it's so frustrating to not being able to convey my message. Maybe it's the messenger, but I just, I'm, I agree with Pris. I'm not gonna keep kicking it the can down the road. I will be back. I will sit down if it's okay with the administration and our attorney to sit down with staff, look at all what's out there and present it to the board. We're going up February 18th, so we don't have time for a work session. So once we get something pulled, I guess I'll give it to Sherry and then she can pass it to you guys and we can talk about it at, before we go to Tallahassee or something. They're not gonna put anything on a bill right now, it's too late, you know that. This will be for next year. <clears throat> but it's something that maybe if we give our legislators in Tallahassee, and even you guys, you can live with and adopt to um, support animal welfare in Manatee County and the state. So uh, I'm gonna call the question. We don't have a motion. Yeah, we, we do, we don't have a motion. Steve. 
thought we've. No. Oh, this was afterwards. We've we already. Oh, I'm sorry, Thomas. I'm done. sorry. I'm sorry. You're right. But I like the way I like the way you think. Thank you. Um, <laughs> move this along, Commissioner yeah. Baha. Yeah, real quick. Um, I think it's a great idea for Commissioner Whitmore to uh, handle this situation and bring back something to us that we can look at. I love what I hear from Vern Buchanan um, with the bill that he's looking at. I think it's a true step in the right direction. I think we need to um, all get briefed, perhaps by Nick or uh, Nick someone else on, um, or Charlie, whomever, uh, on his bill so that we're all familiar with what he has proposed. Um, it is truly a good route, I think, to take. So with that being said, I'm, I'm going to try to make the motion so we can move forward because we have a port meeting in four minutes. Um, I make the motion that Carol Whitmore uh, look into the um, things that are going on in, in Tallahassee and in D.C. and come back and give us a report on what might be able to help us make some decisions regarding our pets here in Manatee County. Second. All right. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? I have one thing. Uh, Commissioner Whitmore. Um, Vern Buchanan is not on that bill yet. We've asked him to be a co-sponsor. There's 40 co-sponsors. I've approached his chief of staff on the Puppy Protection Act if he would be one of the co-sponsors. I've said that since the beginning. But he seems amenable to it. He just has to be one of the co-sponsors. Okay. Well, we look forward to hearing the facts. Is there anybody in the public who'd like to address this um, motion before us? All right. Um, seeing no one come forward, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Chair votes aye. Motion passes. So I'll call the saga please. continues. We will continue to discuss. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thanks, Nick. Sorry. I think I'm a all right. Let's <laughs> yeah, see. I think we all uh, need to call him. Let's, oh. Oh. Okay, Thank you, Kate. Um, Thank you, Anne. We're going to take a uh, three-minute break to, before we do our Port Authority meeting. Okay. <clears throat> we'll be back with the Port Authority in three minutes.
Oh yeah, it's, it's, it's yourself, expensive. With the vacuum cleaner. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Going. No, no, you got to go open the dent yeah. vents and clean the. Dust. All right, we're now start the port meeting. Oh, you got to hang on. No, right, nobody's not. ready. Huh? We, we are waiting for the clerk. Right. You have oh, to wait. clerk is all by themselves today. We just need to give a couple more minutes for the clerk to return. All right, as we're waiting for the clerk, she was there a second ago. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Chris, are you filming this? Chris, yeah. Chris, yeah. Chris will wait for the clerk. Sorry. Something given uh, to Port us. meeting is now starting. Uh, shouldn't two quick items. Uh, number one on the consent agenda is our legislative priorities. Dave. Uh, good morning, uh, Dave Sanford, ex uh, Deputy Executive Director, Port Mandy. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair, members. Uh, two items for your consideration today. Uh, one item on the consent agenda, and our legal services agreement that was discussed at our last meeting. Anyone have any questions on the consent agenda, which is the, pri the legislative priorities? I have something. Uh, Commissioner Whitmore? I called David um, a few weeks ago, and then I called him yesterday to confirm it. And if we want to put it on our legislative platform, we, we should, but he said you can't because it's administrative. I asked him about the $5 million that we had approached in Washington about being the reimbursement that's due to us. And I says, because I couldn't, didn't see it on our, I asked if it was on, the first time if it was on our platform, and he said no. And then I got this the other night, and I was going through it, and I still didn't see it. And he says, no, it's administrative, correct? So it's not on our platform. Because it was up, it was mentioned up here at the last meeting that it was on our platform so we could talk about it. It's owed to us, but it's not on our legislative platform, correct? That's correct. Uh, it, it is an administration item in that there's no legislation required. It's a decision on the part of the uh, administration as to whether or not they will include that in the uh, either the Corps' work plan or the President's FY21 budget. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Okay. Okay. Um, Betsy, do you have a question for a discussion on the motion? I do. I do. Um, because regarding the legislative platform, and I guess I was the guilty party that had said that this was on our platform because I thought that this provision, that we in fact be reimbursed for the funds we have expended on the dredging, I thought this has been something that we have long advocated for, but I guess we've done that advo advocating for it is a, you're going to have to explain to me how that is not part of our platform that we are advocating for reimbursement because we do it. I mean, we're, we've been doing it for as long as I can remember, so I'm confused by you're, this. You're cor uh, absolutely correct. However, there's no legislative action required, and we have limited our legislative priorities to those uh, actions or activities that we would specifically uh, uh, lobby either either the uh, uh, Congress uh, or the state legislature for. And this is an item that <clears throat> was recommended by the Jacksonville District. It was approved by the commanding general in Atlanta. And uh, as such, it was actually budgeted uh, by the Jacksonville District. However, it did not make the headquarters budget request 
So the only activity we've had on the, on the legislative side is to ask our delegation to please weigh in on our behalf and encourage the Assistant Secretary to budget for it. <coughs> well, I, you know, with all due respect, we seem to be splitting a very fine hair here. We are asking our <coughs> legislators to help us get this funded. I don't know, maybe that is by some technical definition, not under the term mm -hmm. lobbying, lobbying or asking a legislator for help, but I don't get it. So I, I would rather that we do put it on. I don't know, I don't see the danger if in fact, and I, I know the success we had in this, I mean, because I was there, I wasn't at the meeting, but I was in Washington when this occurred and we were all very excited to have a uh, legislator support us in this position and make a phone call. So I guess, I, you know, I tend to be really blunt and sometimes I get a cold, I'm not being political enough minded, yeah. but if this is in fact what we're doing and we want to make it clear that's what we're doing, why can't we put it on our platform? I'm, I'm certainly happy to do that uh, and we'll bring it back to you at the next meeting. Make a motion. Okay, well, I, I would like to uh, make a motion that we add that to our legislative platform. Second. Basically what we've been doing. Yes, yeah, I, um, I have to have rules of order. We have. A motion already on the floor. Can we take another motion? No. Oh, no. actually, no. I'm on I don't the think floor. so. No, you're it right. It would be a men I would. I would ask you the motion to amend the, to amend to the motion to include that. Yes. Okay. Uh, I concur. I'll amend to include. Um, Commissioner Johnson, which was the seconder. Did you? Okay. I, Commissioner Ball. Yes. Thank you. I I forgot and I hit my button. Priscilla, I apologize. Um, you know what, uh, Betsy, Commissioner Benack is actually she's very correct. This is not. It's nothing new. This has been going on since uh, 2011, Dave, I believe. At least. Um, we talk about it every single year when we're in D.C. Now, I think, well, except perhaps our newest commissioners, the rest of us surely know that. Um, we did have some great... Um, response this year from uh, Congresswoman uh, Grace Napolitano, who I saw when I was up there with the president last week or a week before, whenever it was. Um, we did get money from uh, the Army Corps for moving forward uh, with Washington Park. That was a, a great success. I can tell you that from my last trip up there, yes, it is true. Uh, Marco Rubio's office uh, and, and Senator Scott's office um, and uh, Grace Napolitano all again has tried to help the port get reimbursed the almost 5.4 million uh, that we're owed for reimbursement. Um, the problem is, and you all, if you received the letter, you all got the letter last week um, that uh, Senator Rubio and Senator um, Scott. Scott's office did in support to try and get us that money. There were several different projects that, besides ours, that was listed on the, on the email that we received. So this is nothing new. I mean, it's, it's been, gosh, for before I was on the board. So um, I, I'm not sure why all of a sudden we're acting like we didn't know anything about it or whatever, but, you know, I certainly think it'd be great to put it on a legislative priority because I don't think we're going to end up getting the 5.4 this year. So it is something that we're going to have to continue uh, in the next year. Hopefully next year we'll get it. But, you know, it is something we need to continue to get reimbursed for. Glad to do that. Okay. Uh, Madam Chair, I, I note the absence of a public comment period uh, prior to taking a vote. Right. I was actually going to ask the clerk to read the motion and then ask for public comment and then we'll vote. Uh, the motion is to approve the consent agenda with an amendment to include this on the legislative platform. And I'm sorry, I, I must apologize. It wasn't specified exactly what adding this is. To be able to, to clarify, okay, as a motioner, to be able to um, uh, speak advocate, on, yeah, advocate for funding owed to the port, so that'll cover everything. Specifically from who? That, that you right help. This is in the motion. Federal, and it's not in the backup. Federal Perhaps we could ask legislators <laughs> him to help. Could could we ask, Madam Chair? Could we ask uh, Dave Sanford to help us? To, because it is, like I said, something we've been doing on a regular basis. And maybe you could help put that language in there correctly. Yes. Uh, we'd be advocating for our uh, federal delegation 
uh, to act in support of our reimbursement request for $5.389 million for the federal share of constructing the South Channel project. Sounds good. That's, thank you. Thank you. Do we have any, uh, well, there's a motion on the board. Does anyone from the public wish to comment on this motion? Mm -hmm. Seeing no one, um, we have a motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Nay. Chair votes aye, motion passes. All right, one other, it's a legal service agreement. Jennifer or Dave, do you want to present it? Yes, at, uh, you know, at our last meeting, uh, you know, we recommended uh, that the board uh, move our legal services uh, with our current counsel, uh, Jennifer Cowan, uh, to the firm of uh, Bryant Miller uh, Olive. And the board uh, endorsed uh, that recommendation uh, through a vote. Uh, we indicated at that meeting that we would be bringing back to you uh, an agreement uh, for those services. Uh, that agreement essentially mirrors the prior agreement that we had with Lewis Longman and Walker. Uh, it's an open-ended agreement. However, uh, it contains a provision that would allow the agreement to be terminated with notice uh, 90 days in advance. All right. Any discussion? Commissioner Whitmore? I make a motion to approve the um, recommended motion regarding our legal um, services agreement. Second. Okay. Any other discussion? Did anyone from the public wish to discuss on this issue? See no one come forward. We'll close public comment. We have a motion on the board made by Commissioner Whitmore, seconded by Commissioner Banak. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. Chair votes aye, motion passes. Uh, does anyone have any quick comments on commissioner comments? On this, on the port. Okay, if not, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, port meetings <laughs> closed? <laughs> no, there's executive director's okay. comments, public comment, and then the executive director's comment. not here, so we're moving on. Who's that? <laughs> <laughs> something, would you have something you'd like to say, Dave? He's going to now. <laughs> uh, no, Madam Chair, I have no comments. No. Oh, Lord, have mercy. All right. Go Court meeting closed, back to Betsy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you for that quick Port Authority meeting. That went very well. We're back to the Board of County Commission meeting. Um, thanks, okay. guys. Thank you. Are you okay, uh, Madam Clerk, with switcheroo back to... Okay. We'll wait. Yes. Okay. We're ready. All right, um, now we're on item number 53, uh, letter of opposition to Senate Bill 1302, Local Government Sovereign Immunity. Uh, Mr. Palmer. Thank you, Madam Chair. Committee substitute for Senate Bill 1302, <clears throat> there is no current House Companion Bill. Yay. If passed by the legislature, will serve to increase the tort liability limits presently enjoyed by the state of Florida and all local governments within the state. The current liability limits are $200,000 per claimant and $300,000 <coughs> per occurrence. This legislation will increase the government's liability limit to $500,000 per occurrence. The proposed effective date is October 1 of 2020. More specifically, the <coughs> bill, if passed, will allow an unlimited judgment to be entered against a local government with any portion of the judgment in excess of $500,000 to be paid in whole or in part only by further act of the legislature, typically known as a claims bill, unless the local government voluntarily agrees to settle for a larger sum. In addition, this bill, if passed, will incorporate a consumer price index escalator into the statute for the very first time in the statute's history, whereby the $500,000 sum will increase from year to year in accordance with the consumer price index. Is the opinion of your county attorney that this proposed legislation should be of grave concern to all Florida local governments? As such, pursuant to previous instruction from the board, a letter of opposition is being prepared for the board's approval and the chair's signature for dispatching to the county's legislative delegation, the governor, the Senate president, and the House speaker. And just moments ago, I distributed to each of you, and you have in front of you now, uh, the letter that we are proposing to be sent. Uh, obviously, it remains to be placed on uh, county commission stationery, uh, but this would be the, the text of the letter. Um, and uh, so 
the letter itself, since it's not part of the uh, agenda package, I, I just distributed it to hard copies. Let me go ahead and read that uh, into the record. It's, it's, uh, it's rather brief. Regarding Senate Bill 1302, Local Government Sovereign Immunity, the Manatee County Board of County Commissioners acted at its January 28, 2020 meeting to oppose Senate Bill 1302, designated as the Florida Fair Claims Act. As the bill is written, local governments and therefore local taxpayers would become a huge target in personal injury lawsuits. This is just one of the far-reaching ramifications of this legislation. We also believe the bill will result in a flood of lawsuits against local government, make cases exponentially harder to settle, and drastically increase the litigation costs local taxpayers must contribute to defend suits because there will be, an, there will be quote, in excess of $500,000 in coverage for each claim. As a result, this bill will require substantial local government budget increases to self-insurance funds. Liability insurance premiums will dramatically increase since premiums are based on sovereign immunity's current limitation of 200,000 slash 300,000. All, all claims that local governments receive demand sovereign immunity limits, but this bill will increase every demand that we receive and force much higher settlements, along with increasing the overall number of claims and suits filed. We note that the Florida legislature has made significant strides in recent years in the subject of tort reform. We view this proposed legislation as a step in the wrong direction. In closing, we ask that you oppose Senate Bill 1302 and other efforts to raise sovereign immunity limits that will cause undue burden on Manatee County taxpayers. To be signed by Chair Banak. All right. Uh, uh, questions. Entertain any questions the commissioners might have? Uh, Commissioner Trace. I move that uh, we send a letter opposing Senate Bill 1302. Second. Oh, we have a motion Third. and a second by Before virtually everyone. everyone. I will say, Misty, I heard first. Um, probably she's right next to her, but I think we're all definitely in support of this. I'll open this up for public comment. Anyone want to address the board on this issue? All right, seeing no one come forward, I'm going to close public comment. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Chair votes aye. Motion passes. Thank you. And, um, Thank you. Thank hopefully you. this will never get a companion and will not. Um, Let's hope so. We'll, uh, we'll get the letter into final form on Press County Commission stationery and get it to you for signature, Betsy. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, <clears throat> now we're up to item number 50, Criminal Justice, Mental Health, and Substance Abuse Reinvestment Grant. This looks like good news. Good morning. Hi. Um, Madam Chair, uh, Board of County Commissioners, County Attorney Palmer, and County Administrator Corrier, Ava Eady, Neighborhood Services Department. I'm joined here this morning with, uh, by Melissa Larkin Skinner, our Chief Executive <coughs> Officer for Centerstone, and Joshua Barnett, our health services manager. The criminal justice mental health substance abuse grant was something in early January of 18. The Public Safety Coordinating Council recommended uh, we apply for. It came out in November of that year. And in January of 19, this board um, recommended that Centerstone apply for it. They did so, and in July of 19, they were awarded that grant. So they are here to provide an update for you. Good. Joshua? Thank you. Good morning, Commissioners, Mr. Attorney, Madam Administrator, Joshua Barnett, Healthcare Services Manager. I will be co-presenting uh, with Ms. Larkin Skinner on this grant, um, both as your Healthcare Service Manager and also at the suggestion of Mark Engelhart, who is the facilitator of the sequential intercept mapping process at the University of South Florida in the Florida Mental Health Institute, where I'm currently a PhD candidate. Yay. Wow. <laughs> Hi, I'm Melissa Larkin Skinner, CEO of Centerstone of Florida, and I'm not a PhD candidate. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, Madam Chair, Commissioners, Madam Administrator, I just want to thank you for your support on this project. I think it's really important. Policy decisions are best made with information, so analyses are very important. We all have a lot of feelings about things and notions about things, especially <coughs> when it comes to mental health and substance use, our whole industry is based on feelings, right? So um, this allows us to, on the state's dime, look at our community and do an assessment so that we can make good policy decisions moving forward. I'm gonna step you to pull up the presentation.
fuzzy or is it me? It's fuzzy. Okay. It well, <coughs> it's clear there. It's better. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's just too close. No, I know I can go. Oh, okay. Thank you. All right. So as your health care services manager, um, I provide support to the county regarding its indigent health care, which bridges the spectrum of both primary physical health conditions, including specialty conditions, which does include behavioral health services. And this board has engaged in conversations previously regarding the intersection of behavioral health, <coughs> uh, public health, and if you can think of a triad, criminal justice as part of the implications for what we're here to talk about today. The Manatee Reinvestment Planning Project Collaborative is a reinvestment planning project for one year funding for the planning activities associated, which was awarded to Centerstone, uh, in which this board approved the application for that grant following the recommendation of its Public Safety Coordinating Council. I'll be speaking about the policy and the work thus far, including providing an overview of what sequential intercept mapping even is, and then um, Mrs. Larkin Skinner will be speaking about the analyses that were conducted by Centerstone and their in-house experts. So this uh, grant is intended to address criminal justice diversion, re-entry <coughs> services, and treatment needs of adults with mental health and substance use disorders to make sure that these individuals who may have criminal justice implications are diverted to the appropriate treatment setting rather than incarcerated for conditions that may have drawn uh, moved them towards criminal-like behavior. The background is this grant is under the Florida statute and sits within the Florida Department of Children and Families. Funding is provided to counties to plan, which is where we are today, also implement as a separate grant and expand initiatives that increase public safety for these individuals, avert increased spending in the criminal justice system to address behavioral health conditions and improve access and effectiveness of the treatment which means we are looking at evidence-based practices, not just homegrown programs. And this is intended to address the needs of both adults and juveniles that have mental illness, substance abuse, or as we often know, they have both as a co-occurring disorder, and address the at-risk um, populations or those who are currently within the criminal justice or juvenile system. The Board of County Commission does designate a Public Safety Coordinating Council, which Manatee County currently enjoys, and it is supported by the Behavioral Health Stakeholders Consortium within this grant, to which I chair. This is to give you an outline and structure of what that looks like. So if we went from the top down, you as a Board of County Commissioners uh, uh, provides authority for the application of this grant per Florida statute. You also have a Public Safety Coordinating Council that provides you with recommendations and reports. We are working in concert with them from a behavioral health lens, so I serve as chair to the Behavioral Health Stakeholders Consortium and also the Acute Care Committee. And Dr. Renice Remy serves as liaison to the Public Safety Coordinating Council, which is chaired by Commissioner Bellamy. The activities completed to date include the recommendation for the application of this grant. In January, this commission designated Centerstone as that grant applicant. There's an in-kind contribution that's provided um, by the county itself, such as us as staff, relative to this grant, the sheriff's office, the judicial circuit, NAFCARE, <coughs> which is the current health care vendor within the jail itself, and other local nonprofit agencies who donate their time to help provide the um, infrastructure necessary to move the grant forward. In February, the grant was submitted. The sequential intercept mapping process was conducted in July, and we have currently been meeting to receive updates from each subcommittee chair, which this board will receive today. In terms of deliverables, we are currently in quarter three, so we've already completed with the work in support of Giselle Stolper, who is a consultant with Centerstone, including many of the subcommittee chairs, um, meaning we have completed the SIM process, the needs assessment, which this board may have received already, uh, which is this lengthy report. Reading. Disseminating the results of that report, and then we're beginning to look at the evidence-based practices that this board will receive recommendations from, and then submit the strategic plan to the state to get the additional funds for implementation of such plan. The goals of a sequential intercept map is to create a map of the current criminal justice systems and points of interception for a target population to see where these individuals may go, to see what we can do to intercept and intervene earlier rather than waiting for them to continue in a continuum that could be more expensive 
or not address their needs early on, which could cause um, greater exhaustion into the system. It's to identify these resources, gaps, and priorities for jail diversion, and then develop a plan to address those priorities. At my hire, um, this was one of the goals of our current administrator, Mrs. Corrier, as when she was director of both the neighborhood services and former community services department to make sure that Manatee County was part of the SIM objective. <coughs> I wanna walk you through what that means. There are five intercepts within a sequential intercept mapping process. This um, was conducted with 39 representatives from our community that span the continuum of criminal justice, um, support, um, behavioral health treatment providers, and law enforcement, et cetera, to find out what services we currently have within each of these intercepts. This is the meat of the presentation for my component. In intercept zero, there are opportunities to engage people who may have crises in the community to address them locally without needing to transport. Um, and these include police-friendly crisis services and um, averting the crisis within the home rather than transporting them to a facility. In intercept one, this is dispatcher training, how to professionalize the response that we do provide, including specialized police responders, and identifying our super utilizers, who often contact 911, and what, what needs do they often have. Intercept two is the screening process. <coughs> that would be familiar to you as the Baker Act or Marchman Act Receiving Center, where evaluation occurs. So this is the screening and matching behavioral health data with those who may be in our jail and then also working with our pre-trial services and supervision and diversion, which also does occur within the Neighborhood Services Department under the leadership of Jennifer Berg. In Intercept 3, this is treatment courts. You may look at mental health treatment court or drug court or what's now being looked at as a comprehensive court since those conditions do often co-occur and working in collaboration with treatment providers and veterans to address their unique needs. In Intercept 4, it's the transition planning. What needs to be done to effectively move people out of the jail to ensure that they're supported sufficiently in the home, their new home, or in the community to reduce unnecessary or preventable recidivism? And coordinate warm handoffs, warm handoff, such as the treatment that they may be receiving in the jail, to make sure that they continue with that treatment out in the community, or vice versa, if they're already receiving treatment in the community and happen to be arrested for something else that their treatment needs, medications and supports, et cetera, do continue while incarcerated. And then last is a specialized community supervision. This is making sure that individuals have the sufficient support as they live in a new home or with new people to receive skills necessary to navigate the community successfully, to avoid um, uh, potential arrest for behaviors that might have gotten in trouble before, making sure they're abiding by treatment, such as the medication-assisted treatment, which is an evidence-based practice, and um, access to other permanent supportive housing services. The work groups to date include a leadership and planning, which I chair as the Behavioral Health Stakeholders Consortium. Jail, di uh, jail diversion and pre-booking is chaired by one of our champions, which is Lieutenant Joel Perez and co-chaired by Captain Catherine Estabrook. For the specialty court programs, we have Chief Assistant State Attorney Cynthia Evers, who chairs that subcommittee. For jail reentry to the community, we have Mr. Francis Enriquez from Turning Points. And for community services and supports, that's Mr. Brian Payne from the Salvation Army. And the purpose of the purpose of this slide is to allow Melissa to present. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so like I said, um, all good policy starts with actually doing the research to find out what's going on. And the whole point of the needs assessment that this um, grant is funding is to get to a point where we know what's going on, uh, we know what our resources are, and we have a lot. Uh, but also identifying those gaps, because we also have gaps. Every system has gaps. So um, what I wanted to highlight is this report and the research was actually done by Centerstone's Research Institute. It is a, a sister organization to Centerstone of Florida, but it is an independent organization. They don't report to us or anything like that. It's just a, a brother-sister type of relationship. So. Um, and it is staffed with research scientists. So this is a very uh, a unique view from people who are not based here, but came in to look at our system, 
do the research. And what that research consists of, and I'm assuming I just have to click here, oh good, uh, is focus groups, one-on-one -on -one interviews, and an online survey uh, served as the primary data informing this assessment. And then lots of secondary data, which is primarily getting reports from different sources in our community. And you can tell that it's a lot of, a lot of stuff, right? And the value of it is there's a breadth of information. We're not just looking at one thing or, or one organization or even one industry's data. We're looking across the system. One of the things that I, I do want you to try to think about <coughs> when you look at this report, if you haven't already, or when you review it, is that there's a lot of information and it's all numbers. And what I want you to try to remember is what we're talking about is people. We're not talking about numbers. And it's people who are our fellow citizens <coughs> here in Manatee County who are really struggling. And it behooves us to help them. So it kind of gives you, uh, this slide kind of gives you an idea of all the data that was analyzed. And I think that what's important for you to know, um, besides there's lots of national data and state data, data is uh, I was at a meeting last week and Major Kaufman from the Manatee County Jail reported that around 238 of the 945 inmates the week before were on psychotropic medication. So that's medication used to treat mental health disorders, mental illness. That's 25%. So, and that's only the <coughs> ones who agreed to take the medication. That does not include the people who've been diagnosed and should be taking medication but aren't. It also doesn't include people who maybe have not been officially diagnosed. The other thing to note, just a little bit of national data in this report that is really significant is in 2016, which is the last time this was looked at, there were 10 times more people with mental illness in jails than in psychiatric facilities. And we've known for years, really since the 1960s, and this is one of those things of unintended consequences, right? Before the 1960s, people were housed forever for life, basically, in big psychiatric hospitals, asylums, is what they used to be called, or sanatoriums. Mm -hmm. uh, those were some of the names. And in the 60s, people realized, and rightly so, that that's not any way to treat a human being, that we can do better than that. So many of those facilities closed down, people were released, and there was a community mental health system put into place but like many things, there were unintended consequences. And the unintended consequences became that many people were homeless, uh, create, uh, c not created, but committed crimes, some of them small crimes, and became incarcerated. And so ever since then, we've had this sort of cycle of people being incarcerated because we haven't figured out, as a nation really, how to do this right and well everywhere. The other thing to note is the expense of incarceration. People who have a mental illness who are incarcerated are much more expensive uh, than, than the general population of people who are incarcerated. And sadly, they stay longer. It's more expensive to treat whatever is going on with them. And in addition to the mental health issues, there's likely to be medical issues because uh, they don't always get the care they need on the medical side. And frankly, some of the medications cause some serious medical issues. There are also behavior management problems are, are a little more severe sometimes, especially if they're not getting their medication or the medication isn't working. So one-sixth of men who are incarcerated have a mental illness, and one-third of women who are incarcerated have a mental illness. And I think it's also important to know that there's a lot of trauma. So we've known now for several decades that trauma as a child causes lifelong issues, especially with cognitive processing. So thinking, not thinking clearly, not understanding consequences of behavior, 
Uh, and so we know that many people who are incarcerated have a history of childhood trauma. And now, Joshua. <laughs> So I'm here to walk you through the recommendations that were provided from the sequential intercept mapping process. These were the activities that followed the needs assessment and the various individuals who came together for a day and a half to spend time looking at our current system relative to what's occurring locally, statewide, and nationally. The first recommendation is about a cross-system reform. So these work groups are looking at solutions that would address these needs that will be presented to this board for consideration or application for other funding. And part of that cross-system reform means looking at opportunities to braid local funding to enhance a return on state or federal grants to address the needs of this population and to support the development of evidence-based treatment programs to support individuals, which we may currently have here that need to be improved upon or brought forward to exist here where they currently may not exist. And looking at ways to prevent incarceration or optimize diversion upstream rather than waiting for them to be arrested, booked to the jail, processed, treated, and then moved back out to the community later on. In terms of a data system process and infrastructure, this is to increase our interoperability between the criminal justice, mental health substance abuse treatment program, and other health and community data systems, including public health or the services that are funded from this county, to promote the exchange of information for enhanced treatment efficiency and the effectiveness of their treatment, keeping in mind that if someone is treated in the community but arrested, we wanna make sure the provider in the jail is receiving the information necessary to continue the treatment that's already been started to identify track or our high need utilizers, those who frequent our system based on unmet needs in the community, and move between the criminal justice and behavioral health system agencies fluidly without gaps with, in terms of transition of care, and to facilitate a continuous quality improvement process associated with that exchange. Third is the training, education, and workforce development. There are new and emerging needs that we always find and there's new evidence being brought forward and we need to ensure that those who are treating this population have that most recent up-to-date training um, to operate within the professional standard. So we're looking at recruiting or training psychiatrists. Those include programs that Centerstone brings forward every year for their psych residency program to support the professional services necessary to serve this population, expand peer work workforces, such as this county also did with the peer uh, support coach program, increase cross-training opportunities to equip mental health and co-occurring disorders professionals to understand the unique needs of a criminal justice population as they're served both in facilities or within the community, and to train all law enforcement officers in the evidence-based um, CIT training, which is crisis intervention training, so that police officers know how to respond and support the unique needs of individuals who they may be called to respond to, but want to know how best to support them and move them to the appropriate care rather than arrest it, than through arrest. And also promote the training of mental health first aid for both children and adults so that we know what to do in terms of a psychiatric crisis. And of course, improve our efforts regarding suicide prevention, which we've heard early in the year is a trend that is unfortunately increasing, not only statewide, but also here locally. In terms of evidence-based treatment and recovery-oriented community services and supports, this is to increase the availability and access to permanent supportive housing. It's a unique skill. One of the things I learned early on in my career when I was working in residential is people who may have lived in facilities where their meals are provided, the time to get up is <coughs> detailed to them, the programs to which they go to, they're escorted to. It's a structure. And when you're living in the community, the structure often disappears, which may also lead the person to recommit, reoffend, and then be reincarcerated because of the lack of structure in the community. Permanent supportive housing is a structure that's provided within their home to learn how to cook, to learn how to clean, to be a good neighbor, to not have people sleeping in their apartments where they're at risk for eviction. So those are skill sets that are not often available, and these types of evidence-based services help promote that success, including clubhouse employment programs. One of the biggest indicators for success is making sure people have a job, knowing what your day is gonna look like tomorrow, the meaningfulness of your presence, and having that um, resource to work and contribute to yourself and your community and earn income is one of the biggest protective factors against recidivism um, or initial incarceration and substance abuse. 
looking at crisis respite care services. So if someone's having an off day or a family who supports someone who has high need, how do we support both the family or teachers or the individuals themselves in the place that they live or work? Mobile crisis so that we have access to go and respond and de-escalate in the community, avoiding an unnecessary transport in the back of, on the back of a police car that usually includes handcuffs. Looking at assertive community treatment or intensive case management, I think uh, two weeks ago this board received recommendations from the healthcare advisory board that spoke about case management and the need to support individuals in the community. Assertive community treatment is one of those models that already exists here um, for individuals who have behavioral health conditions where they have a psychiatrist, nurse, therapy, in-home supports, but this would be specific to a forensic population, not necessarily those who are at risk for psychiatric hospitalization. And then making sure there's a robust network of affordable, accessible mental health and substance abuse services to support them in the community so that they're not inadvertently driven back to the jail to receive the services already paid for because um, it is easy to pay for things that are required, um, but it calls attention to needing to support infrastructure to keep them out of the services that they may later end up in. Joshua is gracious enough to let me have this slide because he knows how passionate I am about this community. It's my community. I grew up here. I care about the people here. I care about the people who will move here in the future. Um, and so what I wanted to highlight here really is that we have a lot of strengths. Most notably, it's our, we're compassionate uh, as a community. We have the Department of Health, we have turning points, we have our local hospitals, we have our local law enforcement agencies, we have the Salvation Army, we have the school system, we have mental health and substance use treatment providers, and everybody comes together as well. I shouldn't forget public safety. We have public safety who's involved in everything in this community. I think that all of these organizations and all these different representatives go above and beyond to try to make a difference in this community. That's our biggest strength, the fact that we have the compassion and we have an interest. We also have local experts, and anything that we don't have an expert in, one of us knows an expert that we can bring to the community or get information from to help us out. So I wanna thank, because I would be remiss not to, everyone that's been involved in this process, and I know they'll be involved going forward because everyone has developed a passion for this particular topic. Oops, I went forward. It's all right. I'm just gonna end on next steps and then we'll receive comments and questions. I echo Melissa's sentiments. This is a grant that um, Centerstone stepped up to apply for, but is certainly engaging other agencies to be part of the solutions because not one <coughs> agency or organization can solve the myriad of issues associated with, with these needs. This board um, will receive the priority action plans <coughs> of the sequential intercept mapping work groups. Those plans will be provided to the Public Safety Coordinating Council to inform their efforts, and this board will then receive recommendations for the adoption or consideration of other solutions, including grants, programs, projects, et cetera, that address the need. And then the Public Safety Coordinating Council will submit the st strategic plan, and Centerstone <coughs> and the community will also work on applying for the actual implementation once the planning efforts are provided to the Department of Children and Families. And I will also again thank um, Madam Administrator for supporting these efforts. Neighborhood Services Department, we work well together. We, I mean, we span the areas <coughs> in so many sectors of need. So to be able to work on this project together with community partners, including Centerstone, we're very appreciative. And so we'll open it up to questions or comments. Thank you all very much. Wow, a lot of information. Um, and Commissioner Bellamy, you sound like you're probably aware of a lot of this. So. I'm aware of a, a decent amount of it. I just want to say thanks um, to staff and to everyone involved. And thank you so many involved. I don't want to start calling names because if you forget somebody, you may offend someone. Um, but the reinvestment um, planning grant, you know, with the needs assessments and giving us the opportunity to look at the gaps and the things that we need to address um, in our community. Honestly, I'm excited about it. Um, because we do know that need. But one thing that um, Melissa stated um, is our strength is our compassion. And, and I think that's, that's what carries our community. And I think that's identifying you all's characteristics and the work that you put in. And I just want to make sure that 
I say thank you, and I'm learning so much. Um, Joshua is, 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 is one of those individuals, if you're in his presence, you're obviously going to find and learn a lot of different things about, you know, um, mental health and all the different things that he's passionate about. But say I wasn't going to call names, but there's a lot of highlights that you're bringing forth, and I just want to say thank you. Great. Commissioner Whitmore. You mentioned needs assessment, and I'm thinking here and about the psychotropic drugs. And when um, we have clients that are um, incarcerated, a lot of it's a trial and error, so they're on the right medication. But we also know in the jail you can stay up to a, almost a year, correct, before you have to go to a prison, right? Okay. Um, and let's say they're on these medications. Well, the real world is is when they get discharged, because right now it's on our dime. We're paying for mm. their medications and stuff. On their and, and then when they're discharged, then they can't usually afford these medications. And if you stop these medications cold turkey, it could be deadly. So um, on the needs assessment, I mean, it's something I'm just curious about. How do we do this now? Um, you know, you could tell them to go to rural health, and they have a pharmacy there, but, you know, a lot of times, like you say, their whole wor world has fallen apart. They've been in structure. So on your needs assessment, are, are you, will this be addressed and stuff? I mean, these medications are dangerous if you take them and then stop. We all know that. It, it's actually one of the challenges and gaps that's highlighted in the report. And I don't know that we have an answer yet, but the point of this is to try to come up with an answer or a solution. Right now, what happens is they are referred to MCR or to Centerstone or to both. But the reality is, you know, many of them don't make it. I think it's like 15%, 20% actually make it to their whatever appointment they have or into one of the facilities. Uh, the cost of drugs is a problem for everyone in the United States. And so that is a challenge that we also need to try to figure out what do we do about it. There are some options. Some of the older drugs are less expensive and work just as well. Some of the older drugs are now more expensive. And so there's like this fluctuation in the price that we don't have any control over. And, and much like the kind of puppy mill issue, we rely on the federal government to set some policy to address it. Uh, and I know there's some work being done who knows when that'll come to fruition, but I think the most important thing is what we're talking about is reentry. So if somebody comes out of jail or prison, we need to have some kind of program or services, whether it's case management or something more than that, to help them be successful when they reenter the community from jail. And that's one of the things highlighted in the assessment. And uh, I know like you've probably all heard of Leviquin when it first came out. My husband used to order it all the time until some little um, elderly man came up to him and said, it's $700. And we went, what? Because Medicare didn't have the pharmacy like some of us in, you know, have commercial insurance. Um, Sherry, I know there was a fund that the county has for prescriptions and it's in community services somewhere. I'm not saying for this, I'm just, you know, and I agree, the older ones, the generic, are probably cheaper, and hopefully there is somebody that's looking at that upon discharge, because if we're getting the person stable, mentally, trying to, and then we discharge them, we're their back again, if they, if they really need that medication. So I, I, Josh, I know in your world you probably are dealing with this. I just, that hit me when you were giving this presentation. Uh, Commissioner, so that this is actually a topic that's been brought to the Health Care Advisory Board as well. So with okay. respect to the prescription assistance program funded by this board, we work, um, we've worked in the past with the health provider in the jail to make sure that if an inmate who is being transferred from a um, state facility that's coming back to the local jail, that whatever medication they were stabilized on during competency restoration, that those psychotropics are continued. And then we're also working with NAFCARE to look at the formulary that they prescribe. And part of the recommendations in, with respect to inreach and discharge planning is to look at whatever medications they're on is something that can be continued prior to discharge, if it's even a formulary that could exist in the community. So before the individual's even started on something, they're looking at what is sustainable and, be, and can be uh, more optimally continued before even initiating the drug in the beginning. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Serbia. <clears throat> Yes, um, thank you for the presentation. It was wonderful. And <clears throat> the first thing I was reminded of was the numerous luncheons and speaking engagements 
where I used to see Mary Ruiz mm -hmm. speak to an audience, and this is uh, Melissa's predecessor. And she would often start off by asking, does anybody know where the largest mental health institute is in Manatee County? And people would say, well, it must be Manatee Glens or Centerstone. And she would say, nope, nope, it's Sheriff Stubbe's hall at the jail. Um, and so that is really what taught me of the problems we have at the jail with mental health uh, and how they overlap. Um, thank you for your advocacy. Thank you for what you're doing. When I think of the people who make the biggest difference in the quality of life of the people in our community, you two are at the top tier. Yeah, these people I are. really, really appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah, I think this was a, a very good presentation. It's something that I think we inherently know, but like you said, unless you have the data, you, re you really can't solve the problem unless you totally understand the problem. And I, I, from what I've heard, that was what this effort has been about. And I think that there's so much value in just bringing everybody together. And I know we've been doing that, but this, is, this really goes above and beyond. And when I think of the players, um, and I, I asked the question, well, why have we done this before? You know, I mean, why, why haven't we gone after this grant before if it's, it's been there? And, and you know, we, have, we do have some different players. You know, our sheriff has been, it, from what I've been told, has been extremely involved in this issue. And we hear him. We know what he's working on. Um, you know, how he's having is um, the pods. And I can't think of the word right yeah, now. It's on my brain. Um, the recovery infirmary. pods. Yeah. I knew it started with an R. Um, you know, and trying to recognize, you know, we all know because we fund the budget. We know how much it costs to accommodate folks that maybe they don't need to be in prison. They need to have help. They don't, don't need to be in jail. They need to have help. So um, this data seems um, extremely important and acting on it. You know, we know that this is just part of it. We want to keep it going. How do we take these results and do something? And we talked a lot about that earlier, Get doing something. Um, it's going to take resources. So I hope you will be back to tell us. Um, next phases, what is it going to take and what, it, what is it going to cost? Because we need to have this community discussion because it's costing us a ton right now and we need to look at the alternatives. What, what are the alternatives? And we talked about drug costs. Well, you know, it's a big issue for everybody, like you said. But if you have better health, mm -hmm. better outcomes up front, maybe you don't have so much drug costs. You know, so I, I look forward to hearing more about this, but... Um, it looks to me like you've done a great job. I just applaud you and all the people that are working so hard on this together. Um, it's, it's a huge issue in this community, but this community cares. So I think we can make a difference. So thank you. Uh, anybody else? May I say one more thing? Sure. I'm, I missed thanking the state attorney, <clears throat> the public defender, Commissioner Bellamy and his leadership in the public Safety Coordinating Council, the court administration, and of course your staff, because they really are phenomenal, the, the amount of energy they put into this. And I, I realized I didn't have my list when I was thanking everybody. <laughs> okay. Well, there's uh, no action required, but we look forward to hearing more about this as it comes forward. Commissioner Bellamy? Yes, I can't think of her name right now. She's presented in our, in our meetings. <laughs> no. Right. It's so important for us to acknowledge because she comes in with all the data and the information and gives us the direction where we're going. I apologize, Christelle, that I couldn't, couldn't grab your name, but you, you should also be applauded and be appreciated. Thank you for everything that you're doing. All right. All right. All right. Thank you, Commissioner Bellamy, for your leadership on this. Uh, we appreciate everything that you're doing and uh, look forward to hearing uh, more about what the recommendations are as we move forward. So. Thanks, guys. Um, okay, well, that basically is the end, end of our agenda. We're going to bring up the items that were pulled off the consent agenda at 1130. So uh, we'll go ahead and take a couple of commissioner comments. If anyone wants to make them, I'll go ahead and start with Priscilla. I always tend to turn right, but I'm going to turn left. I attended the coastal heartland estuary. 
uh, which is the Peace River down in Charlotte Harbor. Actually, Charlotte Harbor. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it goes all the way up into Polk County, mm -hmm. and uh, really working hard. A lot of people on the uh, on the blue green algae, and <clears throat> water runoff, and water sources and stuff. And it was a very good meeting. I'm done. Okay. And I spent a lot of money at the fair. We had a good time. Thank you yeah. for every, and thank you for everybody's support. A good year for the fair. Did they have a good turnout? As far as you know? I don't think it was a record, but it was good. Okay, it's pretty nice weather. It was on the on the days it mattered. Mm -hmm. well, it was a little chilly one day. Yeah, well, gotta have that. Uh, a little. Fair. That's the fair. <laughs> Commissioner Servia. Um, I have some comments, but I think it's going to take longer than two minutes. So, would you like for me to go now and delay our consent agenda, or come back to me? We'll come back to you. Thank you. I have a whole page of comments, so uh, I'd rather wait till later. <laughs> I'm going to keep quiet then. So. <laughs> All right. <Thank> Archie. <laughs> Mr. Barr, nothing? No. Well, I'll, I'll just say the couple things that came up. Um, I attended the Greenways and Trails um, Council meeting in Tallahassee this past week. Uh, you want to talk about cold, guys? Come on. Give me some slack, man. It was. It was chilly, but I loved it. It was um, very eye-opening to hear the presentations I will go into and I will share the information. I have to admit, I love this stuff. Mm -hmm. The idea of having time outdoors is extremely important to me. I think it's extremely important to our health as human beings that we spend time outdoors. I actually studied it in college, yeah. that it does improve your red blood cell count to spend time outdoors. Um, so it's always <coughs> fun to circle back to what you studied way back when in college. And um, got a chance to uh, ride a trail in Tallahassee with a, a bunch of other um, outdoor geeks. So it was really fun. I really enjoyed it, but a lot of good ideas. One of the things that made me definitely made me think about with the MCOR um, planning, um, the, the need to have, you know what MCOR is, the roads that are being planned the extension of this, um, the, basically the Heart, Heartland Parkway, the Suncoast Parkway, what's the other one? I can't think of what it's called. But those are moving forward, and so there is a need to assess the um, need for habitat protection, big time. Oh, okay. You know, we have underpasses, we have overpasses, mm -hmm. but we need to have that analysis done simultaneously. And I, I did bring that up yesterday, at the MPO meeting when we talked about MCORs, that that is something that is very uh, vitally important as these new corridors move forward. And you know, we're all in support of the corridors. Very exciting um, economic opportunity for the state of Florida. They're complete corridors, so because they are complete corridors, they have to take into account where, it, where are the flora and fauna that need protection in this state, and it really needs to be recognized as part of this effort. I brought that up at the MPO. I'll also say yesterday at the MPO, we talked about the TRIP projects. I think some of us were very, um, well, I guess there was good news. The good news is that there's recognition that Manatee County has been very uh, poorly funded under TRIP, Ooh, under the time. three counties, um, no Sarasota, Charlotte and Manatee were at 10% of the funding, and I can't tell you what the time frame was. But, you know, and I said, as we've all learned, if we do not ask, we shall not receive. So I want to visit that. I talked to Clark about that. You know, I know we added Mox and Wallow, I guess, mm -hmm. to the, the trip. But there's others. Ford Hamer is a great, you know, Pat Neal gave a, a presentation about the missing link. And if you look at that uh, roadway, Fort Hamer all the way down into uh into um, Sarasota, mm -hmm. not quite Charlotte County, I don't think. But anyways, all the way down is going to be a parallel reliever for I-75. Mm. You know, that should be perhaps on the trip list. If we don't ask, we don't receive. We need to ask. We need to have a more <coughs> aggressive ask. We're one of the fastest growing counties in the state, so we got to focus on that. And so, yeah, I brought that up. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'll hold off on talking anything more so that we can go to our 11.30 time certain. And we'll come back to you, Sherry. Um, all right, so the ones that we had pulled, first was um, number 16, 16, which was the uh, 
It was budget amendment resolutions. I guess there are a couple items. Uh, four, Carol, four and five. Four and five. Four and five. Four and five. Yes. Yes. And I asked. Uh, I'm of course I support this, but and staff knows why they're here because there's a lot of good information that I think the public needs to hear because we get a lot of social media um, comments about we don't do anything out east. But I would like you to go through each one and let the public hear what we're doing out there. Yeah. Good morning, Commissioners, Mr. County Attorney, Madam Administrator, Jan Brewer, Director of Financial Management. I'm just going to preface mm -hmm. what actually is happening in the budget amendment, and then Chad can elaborate from there. Thank you. In number four, um, we've had an opportunity when we placed in the budget 64, um, State Road 64 at Greyhawk. It's now going to be performed by DOT, so we're taking it off. Right. So the budget amendment takes southeast impact fees about 250000 back to reserves, and the rest was gas taxes, 2425 back to reserves. In that opportunity, Public Works took advantage and said that they know a need is at State Road 70 and White Eagle Boulevard. So you're using 1,485,000 of the gas taxes you put back to reserves and you're applying it to it. So a little bit of process on what all three of these things are accomplishing. Uh, when we, in a hurry, funded the Greyhawk Pope roundabout, that was in response to a need mm -hmm. to get it done. It's still proceeding on schedule. Uh, the project is due to let in March, according to a January 15th email I had from DOT, uh, with hopefully a construction start sometime in June or July this summer. Uh, in conjunction with that project, just to keep everybody informed, uh, also at 117th and 64 uh, to be done with the roundabout project will be a signal uh, install as well through DOT, not with county funding. It showed up in our project CIP because we were going to front the project and be reimbursed in an out year by DOT. That is not needed now. At the same time, we're both growing, I would say, Manatee County and FDOT, trying to be a touch more proactive in the sense of White Eagle Boulevard was our next hot watch uh, mm -hmm. intersection that would need signalization. Very recently, uh, late in the year, uh, we had DOT agree that it would meet warrants. Borderline in its current state and most definitely when they're roundabout and when it's connected to Rye Road. That said, we started looking at ways that we could do this. Um, they, <coughs> in December, did approach us and mention if you could get it installed, we would reimburse you in a future year. So this is why we've been uh, gangbusters on trying to get things lined up in doing that. So it's a... Uh, we have an outside chance. We're working on getting a temporary signal also installed uh, that could time out to be just before uh, the Rye Road roundabout goes in. Uh, this project also funds a permanent uh, signal at that location. No, that's item four, four. four. Number five, yeah. And item five is another signalization of an intersection on Lakewood Ranch Boulevard. This is one where Chad had an interesting lesson in reading versions of the CIP, depending on which day is the print date. I had a hard copy on my desk, and uh, one, I read a date that was a pre-version. It said 2021, but I also made an incorrect statement to uh, Commissioner Ball at one point in time where I said the funding year was 2020 for that project. When you look in the CIP, it is 2023. Uh, I must have made a mistake at some point in time. I would have preferred it from a timing point of view in 2021 in co coordination with Jan and Sherry. Uh, the actual impact fee revenues for close of business year 2019 were plenty substantial mm -hmm. that we can forward front this. We're also at the same time signalizing the four-way stop at Clubhouse Drive and Lakewood Ranch Boulevard. This times out very well from a... Uh, traffic uh, management point of view on Lakewood Ranch Boulevard and it gets us, gets us to the point where we have this signal installed before Lakewood Ranch Boulevard is opened uh, into Sarasota County down to Fruitville Road. Uh, so that, that is our request to move that into a current year so we can begin design uh, immediately. Thanks, Chad. I, and I supported this 100%, but I think stuff like this the public needs to hear. Hopefully somebody watches us. So I, I'm going to make a motion to approve those two items, four and five. Second. Uh, All right, we have a motion and a second. Commissioner Baugh? 
Yeah, real quick, just to kind of give a little bit more insight. Um, Chad has been, as we all know, extremely um, busy and involved with many different road projects out east. Um, I mean, it, it seems like for a while there, we were having meetings almost every day on, on different projects coming up. And so what happened was I was at an MPO meeting, and Betsy, I can't remember if you were there. Sorry. Okay. And I think, Misty, you were. And we had several, well, when I say several, probably over 50 um, people from Lakewood Ranch, from the country club that was there, interested in the situation. And I called um, Vita because I couldn't remember what it was exactly and, and ended up with Chad. And, and when, when, you know, yeah, the dates were, were wrong. And, and I think it was because he was probably thinking of something else at the time because it was at the spur of the moment. None of us knew that was going to take place. So, Chad, I really appreciate all of your hard work. I mean, it seems like, honestly, I spend more time with you, I, I think, sometimes than my husband recently. <laughs> uh, and and I, I hope he's not hearing that. But, you know, we really have had to have a lot of meetings. And so thank you for making this adjustment. And you know what? I didn't even think about uh, Fruitville Road and Lakewood Ranch Boulevard, but it is getting ready to open. And, and we've seen what that has done uh, at Upper Manatee, um, you know, onto Lakewood Ranch Boulevard. So I would imagine this is going to be, like, perfect. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that, for the residents. Yeah, I want to say thank you, too, because I know I had a constituent, one of those people from my old hometown that said, hey, hey, I'm reaching out from Michigan. You know, hey, remember me? And I live right off of White Eagle Boulevard, and when are we going to get a light? And I'm like, okay. Yeah. And, uh, Send it to them. It was, it was interesting, and Clark was actually my first contact, and Clark was able to tell me what was going on, and, you know, hey, had a happy, really? happy, happy camper. That They um, are really, we were, public works is really doing <laughs> That we were able job. to be responsive and say, yeah, we, we recognize that we're working hard as we can to get that light in, and, mm -hmm. and it's, it's all good. So I do appreciate everything you're doing. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve this um, uh, item 16, um, four, and five. 4 and 5. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, and I forgot to open it up for public comment. Anyone want to make public comment? Okay. Seeing no public comment, I'll close public comment. All those opposed, nay. Chair votes aye, motion passes. Good. Okay, and then the next one was item number 35. I'm going to turn this over to Sia if you would please explain what the dealio is with us. Good morning, Sia Melanza, Public Works. Uh, I know it's late in the day. The simple solution, Thank this issue came up uh, in the morning. Uh, this issue <laughs> came up last night. We have prepared a replacement map. If you don't mind, I could just turn in the replacement map and we're done with it. That's okay. it? Unless tell you want an explanation. What, no, just tell us. Well, what's the explanation? Oh, we, we put a, uh, for a change, we put some notes on a, on a master plan to clarify it. Instead of uh, clarifying it, it raised more question. So <laughs> we'll just remove the notes. <laughs> Welcome to my world. There's, there's <laughs> lots going on, and I appreciate you fixing this and getting it done um, because this is important stuff. The, um, Adoption of the North County Wastewater Master Plan update. So we want to make sure it's right. We've got a lot going on in North County, and we appreciate you working together to, to fix this. So I'm going to open this up for public comment. Is there anyone who would like to address the board on the adoption of the North County Wastewater Master Plan map update as updated? Okay. Seeing no one come forward, I'm going to close public comment. It's a pleasure of the board. I move that we accept uh, item number 35, was it? As corrected. That's corrected. Second. Second. Okay. I think Reggie did second. We have a motion to uh, approve as corrected, approve the recommended motion with a correction to the map as um, presented today by SIA. And uh, that was seconded by Commissioner Bellamy. Yes. Um, clerk has. Pardon me? Pardon me? Is this the same map that was in the update? Yes, yes. Uh, no, it, it replaces in the, the update. update. Right. It okay. replaces the update. One in the, update. the updated update. <laughs> update. Updated <laughs> update. <laughs> update number exactly. two. Update number two. For those dates. All right. We've got a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Chair votes aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. That's the end of. 
the agenda except for commissioner comments. There is one item, 49. Oh. It's your dashboard reports. There's no motion required, but an acceptance of the report into the record. I move we accept the dashboard. Second. We don't have to do that, do we? No board action no. is requested. We don't need that. <clears throat> Just acknowledgement that the dashboard is there, has all of um, relevant data where it, what's happening. And anybody have any comments, questions on the dashboard? Okay. Seeing nothing. Um, um, Commissioner Benack, I will have one question under commissioner comments when okay. it's my turn. All righty. Uh, I think we're going to go back to Misty and then Carol and then <coughs> Vanessa. Okay, great. I have something very important to me to discuss with you, and I'll try to be as succinct as possible. Um, how fortunate we are to live in a an area where we have a world-renowned um, marine research scientific uh, group known as Moat Marine, uh, focused on the sustainability of our oceans. Uh, Moat is leading the way um, in our red tide research and blue-green algae research. Um, and they, as you guys know, they attract and employ um, some of the best scientists in the world. And so I feel like when we have an opportunity to leverage our resources in a way and cross boundaries and do more than one thing at once, that's something that gets me very excited. So as the new TDC chair, I'm about to go into my first meeting, um, I would like to go into that meeting with a board support of a motion to draft a budget that shows a $5 million contribution of our tourist development tax dollars. This is not our general ad valorem money, but our tourist development tax funds over the next three to five years for consideration by our Tourist Development Council. And then with their recommendation, whatever it is, I'd like to bring it back to this board for discussion. So here is my understanding in the research that I've done. My understanding is that our uh, marketing budget grows roughly by about a million dollars a year. So if you just look at the growth of our budget, it almost covers the ask. Um, we have a congressman, Vern Buchanan, who is advocating strongly at the federal level for federal dollars to bring back money for this regional facility. Our Senate president, Bill Galvano, is advocating for state money to bring it back to this area for Moat Marine. <coughs> and our sister county, Sarasota, just approved a $20 million infusion of money into Moat's new scientific and research facility that will also include an aquarium. So our economy, I believe, is very regionally based. I don't think it stops um, at any of the county lines. I think we're way past that. I think we're becoming uh, quickly a very populated metropolitan area. And the success of this area is largely based on water quality. And that's, that includes tourism and the quality of life here in Manatee County. So one of the things I looked at also is have we done this before? And the answer is yes. We used our marketing dollars to market the World Rowing Championship. Um, we, in fact, we spent more than $5 million doing that. So um, I'm not asking that we make a decision today. Again, I'm asking for your support that we put together a motion that has our staff put together a budget showing that our tourist development tax dollars can be spent, some of them can be spent by offering <coughs> $5 million to Moat Marine to market what they are doing, the research and the things that they are currently doing out at City Island. It is very impactful on what we're doing here. And if you support me in that effort, I'll take it to the Tourist Development Council. I'll get their input, and we'll bring it back here for discussion. I'm done. We're going to have discussion about that. Commissioner Ball. Um, actually, I was on for commissioner comments, but I'll, I'll go ahead and respond. Um, Ms. D., you know, this has been something that has come up many, many times to this board and also to the TDC, and, and I can tell you that, um, you know, I never understood why it was that 
you know, we weren't supporting it. I mean, you know, I heard at one time, well, you know, we need to wait and see what Sarasota's going to do. Well, we need to wait and see what the, C the TDC is going to do. Well, the bottom line is, um, you know, I think Sarasota's made quite a commitment. I think $5 million in this regard is, is not, uh, it's not a ridiculous uh, amount at all. I think it's very fair. I think this is going to benefit Manatee County more so than what I think some realize because it is going to bring people in. They're going to be going to our restaurants. They're going to be staying at our hotels. There's going to be events held there. Our school kids are going to be able to use the facility. I mean, this is not just a Sarasota event. And I think you were right when you brought up, um, um, you know, world rowing. We certainly didn't seem to have a problem supporting that. I mean, that was jumped on. Uh, more so than what I actually thought at the time that it should have been, but that seemed okay. Um, so, you know, I guess my question to you, I just have one question, Misty, and I don't know if you've thought it through this far, uh, and I certainly didn't know you were going to bring this up, but, um, you know, is that a one lump sum, or, or have you even thought that far, or are you just waiting to take that to the TDC? Yeah, so it is a one-time infusion of money over a period of years. Oh, and that's okay. where I feel like we need okay. the TDC input, okay. you know, and we need the board's input on what's appropriate. Um, I'm looking at a time period between three and five years. Is that a motion that you've made? It is a motion. I second it. Thank you. Well, Commissioner Whitmore. Well, I think uh, we should have more talk on this than just right now. I don't support it right now. Uh, I read the news media in Sarasota where it was more or less usurped by the TDC also, and it got pushed by the board and didn't go to the TDC, and I guess that's what we're trying to do here. I was the chair of the TDC. We asked, they, their ask to me was $5 <coughs> million for um, City Island. It was not for the Moat Marine, and Mine it was for marketing for City Island. And we've asked them twice to come back to us, and they've never been on the agenda yet because they, they are not ready. This is not a Manatee County. Um, and um, <coughs> if, you, if you've if you heard read the news after, when Sarasota pushed this and just more or less told, because they're, they're structured different um, in Sarasota, they just told them that they are going to put their money towards it with no input. Um, tourism is very important to Manatee County. I do believe that uh, our this is <coughs> this regional aquamarine center is going to benefit Manatee County, but I'm not prepared right now, um, just under commissioner comments, to do this. Um, I we've always would have gone before to the TDC. They are a recommending body, and then you'd come back with their response to us, and then we would make the decision. This is kind of like what Sarasota did. That's why I don't support it right now. I'd rather it go through the process. And uh, I, just reading the paper, it's kind of what happened in Sarasota. I will totally try to figure out a way to fund it, but not the way that you're talking about now under Commissioner's comments. I'd like it to be an agenda item in another meeting. Commissioner Trace. I also couldn't support it under Commissioner comments without discussing it first with Elliot. We are committed already with uh, Premier Sports, the hotel in Palmetto. Um, I'm, I just don't know what our commitment can be, and I think it needs to come through the TDC. They're the ones <coughs> on a recommendation and not from us telling them and putting pressure on them. I, th I, I also think it's a great thing. I'm not opposed to putting money. I just don't think that this is the way to go about it. I think it should come from the TDC, should be on an agenda item, and Elliot should be briefing us on what their commitments are, what they need, because I do know Premier Sports <coughs> and I believe the Palmetto Hotel are already items that we have put quite a few, quite a bit of money into upgrading the Bradenton Area Convention Center to go with the... We voted on that, did we? Yeah. Yeah. I don't recall us voting we, on that. We've, we have voted to upgrade the Bradenton Area Ho uh, Convention Center to go along with the hotel. The nation of the hotel. Mm -hmm. I don't I recall that. That, yet. that no, hadn't been approved by this board. I thought it had. Well, okay. But no. we still, to me, we still need. It's presented. Presented. It is up there. It is. County, right. Okay. If we haven't approved it, I know that it's something that they're looking to do. Yes. And we have, so we would have to decide. I'm, I'm also uncomfortable with making this here with, uh, I think it should go through the TDC. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm going to go ahead and talk now before we go back to Commissioner Servia. Um, a, you are chair of the TDC. I congratulate you for bringing this forward. This is going to be an issue for the TDC, absolutely. But I also do not agree that it's appropriate for this board 
to give a motion to the TDDC to do something. They're a recommendation body back toward to us. Mm -hmm. And this is an issue, yep, we all knew it was coming forward. We all know that they'd asked for the $5 million, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of details mm -hmm. that have to be presented. And you know we don't have unlimited funds even in tourist development taxes. We have obligations for beach renourishment, which is the biggest part mm -hmm. of that funding. The other ones that uh, Commissioner Trace just listed. Yes, we did provide funding for the rowing. It was over a period of years. There was a budget for, I believe, for each year for exactly what would be done. I've heard none of that mm -hmm. on the marketing for the, um, uh, what I thought was for the new um, facility. I don't know if it's for broader than that and not just the um, new aquarium. Uh, that's what I thought it was for. So there's a lot of details. And again, we can't, you know, we, I, I, I totally do not believe, I know we take motions at the end of the meeting. This is a huge issue. I, with a, no input at all from the public, I think this is an inappropriate time to, to act on something as large as committing $5 million with absolutely no discussion at all from the public. I, I don't think that that's, what, something that I would recommend. So my turn. Uh, mm -hmm. Sherry was next, and then I'll go to Misty. Um, I was just going to provide, um, in concert with um, just an update on where we're at on this for your f further knowledge, and um, provided this to the TD to the TDC chair just yesterday. I think it was. Um, I think you all are accurate, but there's a lot of topics. So let me remind. We did have an original written request for $15 million on this, but to support the new aquarium. Um, in early July, um, Dr. Crosby contacted me by phone and asked for that to be withdrawn, of which he officially requested that. And then they uh, came back and mentioned and put together a proposal to go to the TDC instead of supporting the new aquarium, City Island, as um, Commissioner Servia has mentioned. The current request is for the City Island support for marketing. Uh, that came to the TDC also as former Chair Whitmore mentioned back in, I believe, September. And at the time, the um, there was some more information to be provided. So um, we have, as staff, reached out um, on a regular basis. I'm going to say monthly. I've been following that. Ask Elliot to do that. And um, Dan B. back, the representative from Moat, who's been real helpful in keeping contact with us as well. We've gone back and forth on trying to get them on a new TDC agenda. They weren't ready in November to address it, and so February is the next meeting. Um, we've um, reached out to them a couple weeks ago about are you have you been able to put together the responses needed that did TDC requested for February. We had not heard. However, um, we reached out again this week to find out if they would be ready. So it would be staff's intention as support to the TDC that if Moat was ready that the TDC would be ready to receive that in the February meeting. Okay, uh, Commissioner Servia. Yes, and um, thank you for the discussion. And I agree, I just wanna clarify, Betsy, that yes, there are a lot of details to work out. I am not asking this board to approve a $5 million um, uh, spend right now. That is not my request. Uh, my request after speaking with our department director, Elliot, yesterday, he asked me, he said, please, in the words of Ed Hunsicker, get a couple of friends to support <laughs> you on the board that you want our TDC to um, consider this. And if the board wants the TDC to consider it, we'll put it on the agenda. So I'm oh. doing what Elliot has asked me to do. I'm not asking for you to spend money. I'm asking for a budget to quickly be put together so that the TDC can evaluate what it looks like and then with their input so that this Board of County Commissioners can make a decision. I'm gonna remind you of a couple of things. The session has started, as you all know. What I have learned in my very short time up here in the last year is if we want something from the state of Florida or if we want dollars, let's be frank, from the federal government, our representatives are there to help us get what we need, but they will only do it if everybody is cheering them on unanimously saying our community wants this. 
we are into the session. This is gonna. This is a very, very short window. This is going to be a lost opportunity if we don't act quickly. I think that time is of the essence, and I would like for this board to say, please, staff, put a budget together. Show us what it looks like. Please, TDC, give us your input on that. Tell us whether or not you can support it, and then come back here and discuss the details of the project so that we can decide either to move forward or not to move forward, <coughs> but together in unity. Madam Chair, I'm on the board. Can I speak? Uh, Commissioner, uh, excuse um, me, you're number next. one. Yep, you are next. Okay. Uh, on your green sheet, if you look on the back of it, you'll see at the very top the oldest item on the uh, uh, on there, yeah, we already did. dated March the 26, 2019. Motion for staff to look at possible ways to find money and immediately have the chairman write a letter to the state stating Manatee County enthusiastically supports moat. We did that. We did that, we did that we letter. Did that. Okay, we did the letter, but my point is we had already Both voted to, to find the money to do something with. So here we are now. It's almost a year later. Uh, and we're still, as we said earlier today, kicking the can down the road. Um, so I, you know, it doesn't matter to me what this board uh, decides to do on this, but I think it's only fair that, you know, we ask a lot from our legislators and they don't ask a lot from us. And just saying. Well, I, I, and I, I appreciate your point that, in fact, we've already done this. We've already said we want to help vote. Mm -hmm. We want to do it. I think Misty's, I think Elliot's response yeah, this board absolutely has said we need to look at the moat issue. No one has ever said we're, we're not, and I think we're doing that. That's what's confusing to me. Sherry just presented the information, said that we're doing that. So I'm not sure what Elliot needs, but if Elliot needs this board to say we need this issue to come before the TDC, I'm in favor of that. If that's as simple as the motion that's that we it. need this issue to come that's before the said. TDC. That, that is what I said. That's I don't what have her any motion problem was. with that. That is... Okay, well, that's that is what I meant to say. Okay, Same Sherry, do you want to? I, I don't want to be argumentative, but I just, I really want to clarify something. We have done what's on the green sheet. We did do the letter, <laughs> as you all indicated, but remember, that was when there was a request for the new aquarium. Right. This is not the new aquarium. There's no request for the new aquarium. It's for City Island, and it's specifically for marketing, right. and there was a request for a time frame, so we... That's all we are working on right now is trying to coordinate the response of information that would allow the TDC to evaluate whether or not those fall within the guidelines of the use for TDC funds. That is, that is where we are right now. Okay. Um, Commissioner Johnson. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not in favor of it at this point. You know, like I say, under Commissioner comments, I mean, the TDC is there. They're, they've been empowered to go through their stuff. I feel like now we're going to bully them, you know, by sitting no here and, and telling them, hey, this is, what we, this is what we want up here, so you really don't need to spend a lot of time on it. You know, I think there was initially a lot of legal issues. Initially, it was, like you said, for the aquarium, and now they've switched it to City somehow Island. try to, I don't know, put some lipstick on the pig to make it, you know, kind of like, oh, this is for the, uh, you know, for our moat marine down on City Island. So it's kind of changed. And it seems to me there were some legal issues at one point as to what we could use TDC money for. There are always legal issues bound up in the use of, of tourist facilities. Right. Tourist so, I, you know, dollars. I just don't feel that there's, you know, I, I want to see a lot more information. And I'd like to see this TDC, you know, that's what they're there for, you know, you know, go to work on it, you know, and come back and bring us their recommendation after they've thoroughly vented all the different issues that are out there. Commissioner Whitmore. And uh, I can see where Misty's coming from, and I totally get what Steve's saying. Uh, I was involved when it was switched to City Island. Uh, Sherry's just given you that she's tried to uh, contact them within the last week or so. We still don't have anything to present to the TDC. I think to go through the process that we should go to the TDC first, and you, as the chairman, can ask them if they would um, support presenting a budget to the board. Um, how, where would the marketing dollars come from, and what? And I would want to see what programs that Manatee County has that it's going to affect versus not. What programs we're not going to be able to do, because if you lay your take your foot off the pedal, some wish we would, but then if we do 
then we are, that affects jobs in Manatee County and the whole picture. Um, Sarasota is very, very upset, the TDC, that they did this um, without going to them first. I, and I'm telling you, um, we're talking about Moat, but I was on the TDC. They switched it to the city island marketing for the one that's in Lumbo Key. That got switched, and it was going to be marketing dollars. I said, that's great. I mean, because really, Manatee County has never been included in that. It's all Sarasota. I get it. People from all over the world come there. Manatee County is never mentioned. I could buy, I mean, I could buy that, and I know what they're doing. It's funny money. They're going to probably take that $5 million and use it at City Island, which is great, and then they'll use the money that they have there and maybe move it to the aquarium. I have no problems with that. I support the aquarium. I have, I'm the one, and you are, the ones that are going to get attacked by the citizens if we don't do this right. So I would rather do it right and not under commissioner comments. I, won't, I was almost going to support you on this, Misty, until I heard Steve, because I know what you want to do. You want to give um, them a budget. You want our staff to present a budget to the TDC. So we can analyze it. It's that. not right. They're a recommending committee to us. They should get the budget first and then recommend what they Yes. What they want to do? No, I I think they should be the ones. I think that I you think Commissioner Whitmore's to. asking for, and, and I'm not Those really sure because I've not been on the TDC. I think she's asking for staff resources to be devoted to this, but I think that's already that's already We've happening. Been working on it as of two weeks ago, <coughs> Sherry uh, yeah. last this week has tried to contact them, and we still don't I have a plan. I, Sherry, could you clarify? I just please? I just reached <coughs> out to Dan B back just now and asked if they could be ready for the February meeting, it's coming up. Um, even if some questions that we asked are not fully complete, at least to be able to bring back some of the items so the discussion could be provided. Um, and we've been working pretty well together, actually. I feel like that it's been a good exchange because um, I do think um, that they were working quite heavily on the new aquarium items for the Sarasota right. board and just weren't able to focus yet on us. And so, um, you know, staff is very willing to try to assist. And like I said, we just reached out again this early this week to them. And at the last TDC meeting um, at the, because they didn't, couldn't make it the other one, they weren't ready, but the one at the airport where we had it at the airport, the TDC gave them specific questions that they wanted to, and most of the TDC was kind of on board with it. But they asked some questions, we never got any response back. So I still think it should go through the process, not that I don't support it. And I support our state legislators, I support our federal. Um, they wanted to see some support from Manatee and Sarasota County. They have records of, that we are trying to move forward in Manatee and Sarasota. Um, just did what they did, so they do see that there's support. And it's not that we're not gonna do it, we just maybe have to figure out another way to fund it, not, um, you know, and I want to see what the TDC has allotted in their budgets and what's that going to affect with this $5 million. So I just think we need information to make the decision. <clears throat> I, want to, I want to hear from Sherry because I want to make sure that Elliot knows that this issue needs to be looked at. If, if he needs that from this board, I don't think anyone on this board has an objection to having this issue looked at sure. and staff resources devoted to it being presented to the TDC. I mean, you know, we all know this issue's out there. You know, it's gonna get some done. of us know it a lot more detail than I did. I forgot mm -hmm. that the, they were talking about City Island, that right. it, it moved. It moved. But I, I don't we're think there's aware. any objection we're, to no. staff doing the, because yep. we know what's going to happen. and and. And all, um, I mean, Sarasota County had a lot of time to consider this. They didn't jump on it. No. They didn't immediately approve it. It Last took week. them a long time to come to that. You Last know what? Week. Last it, week. it took them quite a while. Wow. Yes, yeah. but it took them a long we time. We all know this issue was there. Did They did not immediately jump and push this mm -hmm. issue. He did not. I kept saying, well, what is Sarasota County doing? Oh, What's Sarasota County well, that's doing? That's what we were saying before, but now we know. You know, so well, now, well, now we else. know. So we got to do something immediately? I don't think so. February. Well, I think um, that's great. Commissioner Trace. I'd like to um, just kind of sounded like we've been asking them for information for, from the TDC since September. So we moved from March to September, <laughs> which in government, that's pretty quick. Uh, number two, um, I think if you're the TDC chairman, you should be able to put that on the agenda. Right. I mean, you're the chairman. Right. I mean, I would think you could put it on the agenda. And number two, we've been begging the feds to pay us $5.54 in the port. So money doesn't necessarily go quickly. So 
you can discuss it and talk about it for a long time before you actually have to pass it on. So I think I am, once again, I'm not opposed to any of this. I just do not think we should vote today. I think it should go to the TD, to TDC and come back the way it normally does. Okay. Mr. Serbia. Yeah. Okay. So I'm very happy to hear that what I'm hearing is that the TDC chair has the authority to put this on the agenda for the TDC. Always. And yeah. so I am officially asking that this be put on the agenda for the TDC because I was told that we needed board direction before it could go on the TDC direction agenda. Already there. Yeah. So that's number one. That. Number two, please understand. I am never someone who will bully anyone. I don't operate that way. No. I don't. Uh, everything is transparent with me, and um, you can talk to me anytime about what I'm trying to do. Bullying is not something I do, but when there is urgency, you will see me respond. And in this matter, there is urgency. The, the state house or the state legislative session has already started. We know that Senator Bill Galvano supports Moat and all of the scientific research that they do, but he needs the region to support it or he will not get the dollars. This is what he tells us. Vern mm -hmm. is the same. Vern highly supports Moat, but he needs for everyone to support this effort or he won't have access to the dollars. That is the only reason that I have brought it up with such urgency. I would like to take it to the TDC in the next, at the first meeting, I was gonna say the next meeting, the first meeting that I will chair, and maybe we'll have Moat there and they can address some of these questions. But I think if we don't act now, the door's gonna close and I don't know what will happen then. I have an idea. Thank you. Commissioner Whitmore. I have an idea. Why don't, uh, what they're all wanting is an intent from us. That's what Vern's told me, and I, I know that's what Bill wants. He's told Moat that we're not doing anything unless we get the regional. We all know that, at least I, I know that it's going to happen. Why don't we just um, and um, have some kind of like letter of intent that the Manatee County um, supports um, this request, Done. Uh, but we don't. We will not specify the funding source yet. How does everybody feel like that? I think Sherry just hit her button. <laughs> may want to go to her. <laughs> uh, I'm just trying to think of a better way to. Trace and then Sherry. I wanted to call the question. No. There, there's no motion in second, is there? There was a motion. A there, is a, there is a motion on the board. And a second. Um, I will let Sherry talk, and then I would like to call the question. Uh, Sherry. I just want to. Again, say the request to us is for City Island. Right, yes, I know. The request that they're working on with Sarasota, and I've also reached out to them if they could clarify what they've asked the state for is going to be for the new facility. Right. So I, I'm just making sure that I believe I believe there should be no problem with getting them on the February agenda. We've I've reached back out to them again. Elliot will do it again today. Um, even if they're not there, it sounds like you want to talk. You want the TDC to talk about it, and the chair has mentioned that. But we just have to keep in mind there's there's two issues here. It's City Island. I if we're sending a letter of support, which we've already sent on the original request, um, what they've asked now is not for us delving into that. It's the current facility. Um, could you please read the motion that's on the floor? Yes, uh, motion was made by Commissioner Servia to request the board support drafting a budget that shows a $5 million contribution from TDC funds over the next three to five years for consideration by the TDC and then bring back to the board for discussion for Moat Marine to market what they are doing. Um, it was not specified at the motion at the time that it was for City Island. And I don't have a problem adding that language to it. All right. We have a motion and a second. Commissioner Servi, did you want to speak to the motion? Um, yeah, I, I really, um, I, I hope either way. Uh, it seems like there might not be support for this motion because someone has said procedurally we don't need it 
and we can already discuss it at the TDC. But that was my intent to make sure this board wanted to discuss it at the TDC. And once we go through the proper process and have a recommendation of either up or down from the TDC, that is the time that this board will make a decision. So that's all that I want. No matter how we accomplish it is fine. Um, but I will again encourage you that this is a very urgent matter and our state representatives and our federal representatives are asking that we come together on this topic and I'd like for us to do that. Commissioner Whitmore. Well, I just got on my email a cancellation of the TDC meeting on February 10th, but it's from an email that I don't recognize, so. Oh, I just got confirmation that they will be contacted right now okay, about so and it will be placed on the There's agenda. some kind of weird virus going around on yeah. our invites. You're, yeah, you're I getting, just now got it. You can you're see getting it. cancellations. Um, okay, so I just and this pro, this went out to 18 people. Um, I still I don't th I'm not going to support Misty's, but I will support a letter of intent that we do support um, supporting up to five million. Um, for the city island project, and we the funding source will be determined later because I think that's what our legislators want. But that'll be another motion because I don't I'm not going to support this one. Madam Chairman, if I may please um, yes, just say that I I want to be very clear that when we consider this the TDC I'm talking about when the TDC considers this, just like we heard from uh, Melissa Larkin Skinner, I need data and facts. That's why I've asked for a budget proposal to show us what are the facts? How much money do we have? How much money have we promised? What is our um, earning rate on this money? What is it going to mean if we, if the Board of County Commissioners makes the decision to spend the money? So I'm asking our staff to please come prepared with facts mm -hmm. at the TDC meeting so we can analyze data. <clears throat> if I could just rather than having a motion where we're telling the TDC that we support $5 million for it to be found through a budget amendment, whatever. Them. I would rather say that this board approves the idea of looking at funding for City Island We've through the TDC that. and leave it simply That's at fine. that. That's fine. So TDC. that that the details. You already have that. Support but the TDC no, money. we not, have not to my Recollection taken a motion to support money for City Island, no, Vanessa. That was for the marina. Well, the other one doesn't money stay. For the marina. It doesn't. Well, maybe it does. Correct. Under subject. Never mind. So, no request. Th yeah. That no, I don't if there could be a motion to that, I could support that. Mm -hmm. I can't support, you know, find five million bucks over three years or whatever it is because I don't know the details. Well, right, I don't know the details either and I want to understand the details as we talk to our recommending body so that we can all understand things more clearly. So I like the way that you're headed, that's fine with what I'm trying to accomplish. I would just add that again, we need the data from our staff at the TDC meeting for an amount that could be up to five million dollars, what that makes our budget look like. Um, do you want to change your motion? Sure. Do you want your motion to say that this board supports funding, um, TDC funding for uh, mm -hmm. City Island and leave it simply at that? No. No. Mm -mm. Okay. no. I... All right, Commissioner Whitmore. I don't support, I'm not going to vote for this, but well, I will support on a separate motion is to task the county administrator uh, to, to convey the message to our legislators that we support funding the city island with up to $5 million and the city, the county administrator to determine the funding source. And if she determines it's TDC, then it goes back to them. But that'll be a separate. I'm not going to support this. Um, All right, we're going to take a vote on the motion. <laughs> I don't even know what it we're is. We're going to take a vote on the motion. What is the motion? The motion is to Fine five million dollars or something like that. Please read the motion one more That's time. Different. <laughs> it was Bessie's last thing. I think. Okay. No. 
No, it was my last thing. No, no, it's still the original motion. Right, plus no, no amendments. Okay. It's the original motion. motion was made That's by it. Commissioner Servia, seconded by Commissioner Baugh. I've already forgot. To request the board <laughs> to support drafting a budget that shows a $5 million contribution from TDC funds over the next three to five years for consideration by the TDC and then bring back to the board for discussion for Moat Marine to Market City Island. That yes. Okay. Thank you. We have a motion and we have a second. Is there anyone in the audience that wants to speak to this motion? Not oh, a close on public up. comment. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Three to four. All those opposed, raise your hands. Okay. All righty. Okay. I'd like to make a motion. Wait, if we could... <laughs> <laughs> Give her a chance. Sure. Thank you. Go ahead. I'd like to make a motion that we send a letter to our uh, legislators that Manatee County does support contributing up to $5 million for City Island marketing and let the <coughs> county administrator determine the funding, where the funding's gonna come from, the revenue's gonna come from, the money. We have a motion, do we have a second? Motion dies for lack of a second. Commissioner Servia. I'd like to make another motion, please. <sighs> Go for it, girl. Okay. <laughs> when you lose, keep trying. <laughs> That's how you get it, though. Yep. <laughs> I would like my motion to read like this. The Board of County Commissioners supports the staff time needed to prepare the documents that show a contribution of five million dollars over a period of time between three and five years of TDT money so that the TDC advisory board can understand the impact of the request and make a recommendation to the Board of County Commissioners. I'll second that for discussion. Um, Commissioner <laughs> Baugh. Oh, I forgot. Um, the only thing that I, I'm seeing here and listening to everyone and looking at expressions and, and all this is that I, I think the problem with the TDC, Misty, is that uh, we have three or four commissioners that really want to look into moving forward with TDC funds for the convention center, and I forget what else it was that Elliot wanted to do, wanted to bond. Premier. Premier, Premier. right. <laughs> and, and so I think that seems to be the issue at hand that I'm seeing the reason the commissioners do not want to move forward with TDC funds. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, come on, I've seen the looks. Oh, so I, I don't, you know, I mean, I will second your motion. I already did. 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 Okay. Yes, did. Well, have good discussion. I, again, my because I think Chairman, that's the problem. Again, please understand that I'm not asking for this board to make any decisions now. I just want accurate data to be presented at the TDC advisory meeting so that they can have a good discussion and make a recommendation on whether or not. This is a good way to spend our tourist development tax money. Maybe they'll say it is. Maybe they'll say it isn't. Maybe they have a different number. Maybe they have a different time frame. I don't know. But until the TDC can look at the facts and understand it, they can't make a good recommendation. Okay, Commissioner Johnson. Yeah, um, I can't, you know, support it unless the way it is currently uh, written, it indicates that they are going to come back and tell us that we're going to have to c commit the five no, million. It, uh, it doesn't say that. Yeah, well, we, Vicki, could you yes, sir. read that back? That the Board of County Commissioners supports staff time needed to prepare documents that show a contribution of five million over a period of time between three to five years of TDT money so the TDC can understand the impact of the request and make a recommendation to the BCC. And, and, I, and I'm going to respond as a seconder. The reason I seconded it is because we know this question is at hand. We need to know 
Vanessa's right. It'll take money away from something else. That's the way budgets work. Bingo. That's the way budgets work. We don't have unlimited funds. If we dedicate $5 million over three years, what is it going to affect? Right. That is the job of the TDC to look at those requests. We have a request. The way I look at it, the only thing she's asking for is for staff resources to consider this request. I don't have a problem with staff resources to consider the request. I think they got to do it. I think we got to know before it comes back. Now, am I missing something? I, that's what my head As is a matter thinking. of course, doesn't Elliot and his people routinely support the, 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 the efforts of the TDC and exactly. provide staff support? 100%. Yes, yeah. we do. Exactly. Yes, we do. You're, you're, you're right making here. a motion well, for something that should be done. Right well, let me ask, and, and let me ask the county administrator, since she's in charge of the staff, I think the thing that caused the start of this is because Elliot said he needed board direction. I don't necessarily agree with that opinion. I don't I've agree been with it at all. A great one for not agreeing with staff's opinions lately. Um, but Please. you know, I'll just add another <laughs> staff member. I'm I'll not back sure her up that on we it. I've ever been asked yeah. for something to be put on the TDC agenda. I have to admit, lots of times I don't know what's on the TDC agenda until after I read it, after Carol routed it around. Quite I, frankly, I, you know, put stuff on the agenda. I, I don't know everything that's on the, on the agenda. Sherry, what do you think? I would only indicate again that we've been attempting to get them on the agenda with the information. Now, the only difference I I hear here is that you'd like us to put together a financial scenario or set of scenarios taking into consideration current commitments, future commitments, and other concepts that we've discussed and bring you back information on options, or excuse me, bring that to the TDC first, show them that, yeah. and that is certainly what we do, and, and if I'm seeing nods, that is what we will do. Do you think we need a motion? No. I, do, I don't need a motion. Perfect. Right. I just think the motion is fraught with problems, how people interpret it. You know, my head's Absolutely. a little unclear. I will commit that we're going to do that. Yeah. I yeah. will commit that it will be done, and I, I will uh, make sure that you're informed of the status of that. Okay. Thank you. I withdraw the Clear. motion. That's exactly what I wanted second. to achieve. Okay, now what happens okay. now? Okay, let's move on because some of us have things that we have to go. We know that Oh, the, so we're done with it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Staff has been given direction by this board without a motion Again. that we right. want to know what we're this issue done. is, what it means, what it'll cost, and what the options are. Mm -hmm. And, and Misty's the chair, and she'll right. make sure that happens. And right? FYI, Madam Chair, the chair can, of the TDC can always add stuff to the agenda. That doesn't have to have board approval. When is the TDC meeting? It's February, February 10th. 10th, but it said it was canceled, but that's wrong. It's not canceled. It's February 10th, okay. Commissioner. All right. Anything else, Misty? Uh, no, thank you. <laughs> Good. Don't. Uh, Vanessa. <laughs> Misty, I, I appreciate your, your working so hard on this, and, and you know what? I think you're doing a great job. Um, you know, it should be that I was the chair of the TDC for two years, so I know how it's done. Um, Carol, I just have a quick question, please. What is the bill number of the um, the bill in D.C. that you were talking about? I just sent it to Vern. Um, What's the number? I don't know. I ha I'll look it up while you're talking. Well, that's all I wanted. That Are you was talking it. about the animal? Oh, I just animal need welfare. to know the number of the bill in, in D.C. No, no, it's not on news. I don't somebody will get that information to it's, you. you yeah, I now. already said it on public. It's HR two four four two, and I sent two four four two. I sent Galvano. I mean, um, um, Congressman Buchanan, and I copied the county to ask if he was going to agree to be a co-sponsor on this, and I gave him the bill because I hadn't heard from him yet. And his chief of staff already knows about it because he met with Humane Society after we talked. All right, so. Okay, I have like okay. Full anything page. else? Carol, quickly, please. I have a whole page. I'm sorry. So you either do it now or at 1.30. Go quick. Okay. Um, I've had a couple questions asked about the GT Braid dive pool and if that's coming back, and I can't remember. So, Sherry, I, I didn't know what to say. I've had a couple people ask me. And um, I said, yes. I'm not sure. I can't remember. Uh, I we're working on a re We can provide a response on that. We've been working that situation. We'll, are provide, we we'll provide you something in writing for Are we going to replace board. or fix it? Pardon me? Are we going to fix it eventually? Mm. Not at this particular time. That's not our recommendation. We have a co we, will, we can explain to you okay. cost and reasons why. Okay. Um, next, Dale White, as you all know from the Herald Tribune, retired, and he went with no fanfare. Didn't even tell anybody that he works with Harley that he was leaving. 
And I was wondering if we as a county could um, send him a letter thanking him for his years of sit, uh, sitting here for hours and hours and um, representing the Herald Tribune, if that's okay. Um, You'd have to make the a motion chair. to that effect. Second. Right, that, Sorry. Is that a girlfriend? We have a motion and a second. <laughs> One in the public care. Um, Steve. <laughs> Steve. Uh, um, discussion. Me, Carol. Uh, Carol I said I made a motion to write a letter. A write a letter of, of thanking uh, for his years here. The white for his years as a every Manatee every County. Manatee County. Yeah, I uh, thank you Serbia? for bringing that up, Carol, because I think acknowledging his service is so important. Um, would you consider a proclamation? Sure. Uh, well, I'd also include that too. I have no problems. He probably will not come. Obvious, honestly, I don't think he'll come. <coughs> He's worked there his whole career. I know. I've One known place. Him for many years. That's what's amazing. We could ask him if he'll agree for a proclamation, but okay. at least a letter, and and somebody could get us. I know he lives in Parish or in Palmetto somewhere. So, okay. So we'll we'll ask Street about that. West, I, have a, uh, I don't have a problem with the letter, but I know I can think of several reporters. I agree they haven't been here their whole life, kind of thing. But some have been here a while, and we basically. A didn't write a letter, and I know we didn't have a proclamation. Well, no, I'm just that's saying, not are true. we start are we starting precedent? No, we're I'm not. Just not yep. disagreeing, just we're asking not. the question. Mr. Serbia, I'm not on the board. Anyone else on the board? Okay, we're going to go ahead and uh, we have the motion, and we have a second to do a letter. Okay. It has one. not been changed to a proclamation no. unless the motioner agrees no. to do a letter. All those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Chair votes aye. Motion passes. Okay, the next thing is I attended the trolley grants um, in Anna Marie Island Chamber. Saturday, a ribbon cutting for the new large dog park at the old Babe Ruth Field. Uh, there's a few things that I want to ask, and this may take a while, so it's up to you guys. Um, turning points, I heard on the news a few weeks ago that they, had, um, uh, they have a leak in their roof, and we know we sent a lot of money to them, and we um, fund a lot of programs to ho keep the homeless off the streets and get them into the services. Uh, I was asking um, if we could, um, if we would consider, it's a $40,000 expense. I was wondering if we could consider, and we did this for Meals on Wheels. We gave them $200,000 when they had a major issue one year out of our reserves. And I was wondering if our staff could get together with their staff to get the numbers right and um, take out of our reserves, which we have $1.2 million in today, $40,000 to um, help to contribute to get their roof repaired. And who needs a roof again? Okay. Turning points. Turning points. They see. have a, yeah, it was on the news. I, I think I did see that. Yeah, it was on the news. So I'd like to make a motion that the board consider or the board authorize 40000 to be taken out of our reserves to, or thereabouts, whatever the staff and turning points comes up with the final, not to exceed 40000 out of our reserves of $1.2 million. Do I have a second? I'll second it for discussion. We'll have, have um, discussion. Discussion, Commissioner Trace. I'm a little, I'm not opposed to what you're suggesting. I don't really like the motion. A, uh, what the TV said, 40,000. We say up to 40,000. What if they get in there and the roof's 100,000? I would rather have the motion say, we go and find out exactly and then come back and either we can get the money or we can't. I hate to commit ourselves to 40,000. Okay. That I don't know. I mean, maybe a big round. You and I sitting up here have no idea how much it's going to cost. They did have a roofing company give them the cost of? What I it still would cost. rather have our someone from staff. I mean, I'm not happy with the way you have the motion. I'm not saying I'm opposed to the idea, okay. but I would rather have it that someone from staff or whomever that we appoint goes and actually looks at it and comes up with a number that's maybe reasonable. And I'd la like to ask Sherry if she her thoughts on that before I change the motion. Uh, Sherry, did you know anything about it? Uh, I, I told no, her I, I, I did not know anything about it, and um, we will follow the but, motion. But I did tell you I was bringing it up. Can today. I ask who owns the real estate? Yesterday, uh, turning, points. turning points. Turning points as an entity owns the real estate. They're a nonprofit, correct? Okay. Yeah. Bill Galvano wants, but I actually did the permitting for it when I was at this. Well, there, there are some legal issues that need to be examined here. Right. Okay. Well, then I'll make a. In the motion, I'll amend my this. motion to stay to state um, to direct staff and our legal counsel to look at um, the issue of the leaking roof at turning points to come back with us to see um, what the cost would be to um, contribute towards the, the repair of the roof at turning points. Somebody want to come up with a better motion? Um, 
So the motion is We've to basically look at this, see if it's um, what their funding op options are, what the potential costs are, and to um, look at possibly funding this through um, our reserves. Our reserves. I think That's I seconded it for discussion. Yeah. Didn't I? Okay. I'll, I'll agree with the change to the motion. And we did this with Meals on Wheels with just an ask, nothing else, so for 200000 So, you know, I, and nobody from Turning Ports even knows I brought this up. I saw it on the news. So. Yeah, that, that was, that was, that's what I was Mr. on the And my question was, is this coming from Turning Points or is this coming from Commissioner Whitmore? And the reason why I'm asking that, um, everybody has issues. Every nonprofit has issues, and I'm, I would be concerned about setting a precedence where we're just opening that up. And I'm sure that's with the direction that Mickey is going as far as potential legal issues, to what we could possibly run into. That's what my question was. Is it coming specifically from them or is it coming from Commissioner Whitmore? And the reason why I'm asking that, again, the public is listening and watching. I can guarantee you there's probably about 800 nonprofits that's out there listening and saying all we have to do is ask. Mm -hmm. Everybody can ask. Uh, <laughs> Turning train Points is one of a number of local nonprofits whose Fund. operations we fund right. with children's services tax money. No, excuse me. Excuse adult, me. Adult, adult, general, adult. adult General Fund. Yeah. I'm sorry, Adult General Fund. Okay, whose operations we fund. I am not familiar with this government in the past having provided money for capital improvements. Yeah. We, we have, have we? Okay, uh, not, then I stand corrected. Well, based on what you said, this government, it was a grant through the CDBG program. We <laughs> assisted with purchasing <laughs> the um, Manatee Carpet Building. We provided them with a grant. Uh, they applied to us and requested it, and this board at that time um, recommended it. It was approved in the federal CDBG program. And then, I don't know if you all remember, but there was a time during prior uh, presidential administration where there was some funds for something called CDBGR, mm -hmm. and we provided a grant to them as well to retrofit their st and put solar on that building. So we've had two instances with them in capital, but those have been with federal <coughs> block grant dollars. The remainder is for programming and funding through our general fund grant program. And I have got I the, the direct uh, request was on the news asking for uh, that they they really needed help to to fund this and also I actually am having a meeting with Karen Stewart and them this Friday I'm having a tour so I will be um, meeting with Adele but we have set president before we did this for Meals on Wheels for just an ask to keep them operating just so you know so those 40, were operational monies. monies yeah different okay. those were no I know I know but it was out of our reserves well, I know, but that's operational 000. versus capital. Right. right. I, and I, 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 just, I, I just want to say, obviously, Turning Points provides incredible services. Right. We know the return on investment on how it helps people in this community, <clears throat> costs that would be coming out of our budget, quite frankly, if it weren't for a very, very well-supported nonprofit right. in our community. I don't have a problem with looking into it, but I also know that they have a lot of support in this community. They put an ask out. We don't know what the status is. For right, all we we'll know, out. it's already contracted and being done. So I don't support the funding. I have no problem with asking staff to look into to it yep. if that is what the motion is. I need to just You're the double seconder. check. I know. I, I just want to make yeah. sure the motion is simply to ask staff to look into the need for a roof and see if there's a, a way to fund it uh, or to help fund it at Manatee County. Right. Sherry? Sherry? Um, yes, and uh, Ms. Lopez just informed me that applications for the new Community Development Block Grant Program are due, um, I believe, in March, early April, and so those as well could be other sources of application. Okay, so we got a motion on the floor in a second. I would like Vicki to read the motion, please. Please, Vicki. Mm. Sorry, it's your day to read motions. It was an amended motion to direct staff and legal to look at the issue of the leaking roof at turning points to report back what the cost would be to contribute, I think I had it twice, to repair the roof at turning points and what the potential cost and possible funding with reserves. I would be happy if the motion stopped at have the staff go and look at the leaky roof, period, and, then and report back. back, period. Instead of all that other stuff. Did motion agree? Yeah. Okay. 
ask staff to look at the leaking roof at turning points and bring a report <laughs> back to uh, the board for have, consideration. Has turning points contacted us about this? No, it was on, on the, the news a yeah. couple of weeks news. ago. I'm sorry, I'm meeting with them again? Friday, no. and it was on the news, and they made a plea to the public that they have a leaking roof. But they roof. haven't come to us. No, I told okay. you that twice uh, now. Well, I'm okay. just trying to make sure yep. that I'm okay. hearing correctly. Have we have a motion and a second, and it's simply for staff to research the issue and bring it back to the board for consideration. All those in favor, uh, anybody in the public want to address this? Jan, you got anything to add? <laughs> okay. Um, we'll close public comment. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Chair votes aye, motion. <coughs> Next is the fire damage on the families that had the fire in Brainton at um, yeah. Miralago. And um, seven families were placed back in there. They're in desperate need of uh, kitchenware, clothes, and you can um, take the donations or funding, whatever you want to do, to 350 34th Avenue Drive East. Nick got that information. We asked about it at the last meeting. So he was just clarifying. They came back and said gift cards gift only, cards not to, the oh. items, just, okay. just gift cards. <coughs> okay, gift cards, sorry. And our staff, uh, our public information outreach manager can get the information if anybody needs it. There is a major issue, and we, I brought this up a few times now. Uh, oh, we did hire an animal service volunteer coordinator, and this is our second week. Um, there's a major issue with the brown pelicans. I brought this up before. This is FWC, but we, I've talked to Will Robinson about this and others. There is a major problem that people are fishing off the piers or fishing off the boats, and they catch a pelican, and they're just cutting the line. And... Um, Somebody went out to one of the little islands, and there was 24 bed, dead pelicans. Um, Dr. Bystrom and the Holmes family, they send crews out every weekend. Alicia Daughtry, as you probably know her. Um, and your daughter actually called me when I was at lunch Saturday with my family that she found a pelican in the water when they were on the boat all tied up in lines. And asked, daughter yeah, your daughter. Me. And asked me what to do. And I told her to try to catch it because if you don't, it dies because it can't use its wings. It can't do anything. Um, I would ask uh, if it's okay if I um, work with Charlie, maybe come back to you in the future and our staff with FWC to work out something that we could do statewide um, for legislation about not cutting these lines. We're killing the hundreds and hundreds of birds. I brought this up before. This has Steve's been. Deja vu yeah, about this. this has been, and, and it's getting worse <clears throat> because people are just lazy. On the Skyway, they're, they're putting eight to ten poles out, and then if a pelican catches it, they just cut the line. And I've been asked by many, many people to bring this up. Um, so if it's all right, if I could just work with Charlie and our environmental department and then bring this up in the future, if that's okay with you, Sherry, and stat and the commissioners? Okay. And then last thing is the um, acceptance of process service. Um, Mickey was kind enough to, um, to look around about, you know, when we get a um, subpoena, we all have to touch it. And um, one of the process servers said, um, "One person." Yeah, yeah. one person. One. That's what one. I just said. Yeah. Well, I said when I said we all, I meant we all have to. I know. Okay, whatever. One of us. Has anyway, to. yes, we know that. But anyway, um, this process server said, "We're one of the few counties that ever do that, and it's really hard for them to track a, a county commissioner down." Um, so Mickey was kind enough to do a poll, and he pulled seven counties. There's only two that have, the commissioners have to accept the subpoenas, and that's Sarasota and Manatee. All the others, the seven others, the attorney's office accepts it. So um, this has been going on for many, many years. It's kind of inefficient, you know, and it's, it, these guys have to keep coming back. They call upstairs to see if the commissioner's around. Sometimes we got to wait. So mm -hmm. I would just like in the future that's if we can come back and look at possibly having the att attorney's office accept the the Is that by an ordinance? No, it's just a practice. Controlled by state statute. Yeah. Uh, I will tell you, first of all, your county attorney is opposed to changing this. We are. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, uh, but I will, I will do what the board uh, <laughs> desires me to do. It's controlled by state statute. We give, we give, uh, okay. we're talking I'm about gonna, people I'm that are take, suing this government. I'm going to take, it's making I am going to take, uh, chair prerogative. It is late. I had no idea we were going to go this late in the lunch hour. Nor did You've I. have blown my <laughs> lunch at Kiwanis, which we were giving out our awards today, and I desperately wanted to be there. So I'm going to take wait. board's prerogative. If you want to bring back a report, you can do so. I would like to see a report on this issue, but I am not going to discuss it now. We're not going to 
talk about it. We're not going to give direction, but I would love having you bring back a report on this issue. This is is everyone okay with that? Madam okay. Chair, this is Commissioner's comments. Thank you. I just moved this your is comment into comments. the attorney. We're not taking action today. I had no idea this was going to be brought up in Commissioner comments today. Okay, bring back a report. So I am Thank more, I am more, more than happy to educate the board as a whole on what the law is. Thank you. More than you happy to. Give them the report that you gave me, Mickey. Please. Thank you. Well, yeah, we'll I've, look I've already to that sent the report to all seven commissioners. Thank you. Thank you. All seven commissioners. Have received the report. Future agenda to discuss what? that. Are we adjourned? Okay. Anything else? No, that's no. it. Go. Dang okay. That thing. Anything else for the good of the order? <laughs> All right. We are adjourned. This guy said, "Bang that thing." <laughs>Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the January 27th, 2020, 930 a.m. joint meeting of the Charlotte County, Punta Gorda, and Sarasota Manatee Metropolitan Planning Organizations. Um, we need to have a quorum, so Becky, will you do roll call? Uh, yeah. Charlotte County, Good you. Here. Turn on your mic. Okay, just get closer. It's yeah. on. Just get closer. Yep, you're on. Sorry. Commissioner Joseph Tiseo. Here. Commissioner Christopher Constance. Here. Commissioner Stephen R. Deutsch. Here. Commissioner Paul Andrews. Here. Vice Mayor Lynn Matthews. Here. Do we have a quorum? We have a quorum, Chair. Thank you. We're going to do roll call for the record.
Um, I would say we could do introductions of our board members, and that would um, provide the list of who's here. But we don't normally um, roll call other than confirmation of the quorum, for the record. But okay. I, I think if... Um, okay, well, we'll confirm we have a quorum because we have opening comments, item three on the agenda, so we'll do the... Uh, Welcome by the chairs and board member introductions at that point. Uh, we'll all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And before we get started, I just wanted to make a statement that the MPO boards will accept public comment on all items on this agenda. Public input will be limited to two minutes per person per agenda item. Anyone wishing to speak on a specific agenda item or under the, or under the open to the public section is requested to fill out a public comment card and provide it to the MPO staff. I already have one card, but anybody else wishing to speak, please find an MPO staff and fill out a card. And we'll make sure you have an opportunity to do so. Um, so next on the agenda item is open to the public and the two minutes. The one card I have is from Linda Harrison. If you'd like to speak to the public and the two minutes. The one card I have is from Linda Harrison. If you'd like to speak to the MPO board. Do we have a designated place to speak? Yeah, come up to the podium please. And is a member of the MPO staff going to keep time on the two minutes? Sure. We'll let you know. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning. Thank you for your service. Uh, my comments um, relate to item number four, the long-range transportation plan. 